Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Semi Perfect Podcast. It is June 26, 2019, and the weather is still pleasant in Southern California. I don't know how this is working out, but welcome in. It is summertime. Some of you might be out of school. Others of us have not been out of school, or I should say have been out of school for like 10 years. So go figure. But that being said, uh, welcome in to our live audience and, of course, those listening on delay. I'm AC Ray's Best, joined by the beautiful, wonderful, astounding Panama Matt. Howdy. I'm glad you think I'm beautiful, Ray's. You're welcome. And, uh, and of course, the amazing, articulate mm -hmm. Haley Osteno. So I was Haley. He is <laughs> and one then articulate. There, there is indeed... Toodles. Missy's in the house. Missy's in the house. And we got Laura. Hey. Well spoke. Doesn't have to deal with Saber Spark tonight. Did someone just flush? <laughs> My computer made a sound. Was it that? Yeah. Oh. Did your computer flush? <laughs> uh, I heard a flush. I heard I heard the computer sound, but also a flush. <laughs> all of oh. a sudden, all of a sudden we hear Saber go, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> He did uh, break into my apartment when he was before he flew out. Yeah, he really? uh, he broke into my apartment, and left me flowers and cookies. That was pretty cool. That was yeah. sweet. Did he wash his hands? Uh, who knows? <laughs> I was at work. One person's crime is another person's romantic gesture. Gesture. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we immediately need to say super big thank you to Missy. Missing. Who has said, hi guys, still at work, just going to be listening off and on, giving some support. Let's start the podcast off strong. Clap. <laughs> and Thank you, Missy. Making things harder for myself. <laughs> Missy, uh, <laughs> along with um, our other super chatters, is, uh, Missy's always been a very generous supporter of ours here and has helped us actually upgrade. We've upgraded our microphone recently. Uh, we now have a desk that Sarah and I both can fit at. So it's it's through the the help of the super chatters that we're able to uh, upgrade this production and and again a huge thank you Missy you're always so very generous and we can't thank you enough for that. So oh thank my goodness, you yes, so much. <sighs> Sarah, it's a mm. podcast. Yes, it is. Which means there's got to be food. There's got to be food. <gasps> Wait a minute, did 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 Taylor's post make it? Uh, yes. Taylor's Taylor. Your post made it on the f hashtag foods. Yes. You did it. Hashtag SPP foods, by the way, for anyone that wants to show us what you're eating. We go yeah. through this every podcast. What are you guys eating? Uh, as far as us podcasters, anyone eating? I've Scotch. got some Sprite. No. What did Laura say? Scotch. I mm. like it. Although I might go make a little bit of dessert. And by make dessert, I mean you do one of those single white woman mug dessert things that they make that I'm the target demographic for. <laughs> or, 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 I mean, you could, like, get some ice cream and pour the scotch over it. Yeah, but then I'll feel terrible because I have, like, a lactose issue a little bit. So oh. ice cream is usually the worst. Well, in that case, avoid the ice cream. Yeah, a, or I can a... spend, like, a lot of money on, like, coconut milk ice cream, and I'm just not prepared to spend that kind of money on ice cream. Sarah no, knows I, I that struggle. You. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah's all all up in that in those grills. She gets it. <laughs> Sarah, what are your favorite non dairy ice cream brands? Um, the so delicious. Um, I like that a lot, and I've actually been eating quite a bit of their um, ice cream bars, like the double chocolate. Dip Ooh. Chocolate. When she says quite a bit, she means that they're like, here's your one serving for the day. And she goes, you mean two third of a <laughs> serving. And then he's yeah. like eight of them. There's four well, in like a box. When you chips, and, and it's and like, oh, box. here's your bag of chips. And one serving is four chips. It's like, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to stop at four chips. <laughs> right. I, I had a conversation with Sarah about this, actually, as we this is related to food. So it's going to lead us into these food posts yeah. as other people can contribute getting their food posts in. Um, that, uh, I, you and I had this conversation, uh, last time we went food shopping, Sarah, about the absolute tyranny and evil of the juice box. Uh -huh. Like, <laughs> am I the only one that, that thought that juice boxes were always like one sip too short of actually quenching anyone's thirst? 
I never had an issue with yeah. the amount of sips for thirst quenching. I always had trouble stabbing the shit out of the box. Yeah. The straw would always fold. <laughs> nah, see, for me, I was I was always like, I need one more sip, and it was gone. And then they started, then my parents started finding, like, juice boxes that were, like, two-thirds the size, so they were even smaller. And I'm like, this, this is stupid this is this be four juice boxes <laughs> never enough it's no never, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so i had to rant about that all right rant over yeah for now so taylor with the working hashtag spp foods uh says some pizza rolls and a caesar salad is what's on the menu for tonight look how look how Let's well plated chef ramsey would be like circle Chef Ramsey would say, just looking at this, I would pay a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Was that a good Chef Ramsey? No, no, I just like him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for being supportive. Yeah, okay. We got Railroad Bronies tonight for the semi-perfect pod. I got a good old double-double, no onions from In-N-Out with their pink lemonade. Also, lots of fries. Okay, double-double. Double in what, Paleo? I miss, I miss In-N-Out. It misses you, Paleo. <laughs> Trust me. I that's my order. A double double with no onions. Yeah. And the pink lemonade's good. Mm -hmm. God, no, go. Especially hungry. when you make it, mix it half and half with the seven up. Are we gonna have to go to In N Out for dinner? <laughs> we might have to go to In N Out for dinner. I am oh, this stuff. Paleo, send me your address. I'll I'll mail you some in and out tonight. Okay. <laughs> You've been a good boy. But I'm at Saver's house. Oh, well, oh how's the lamb? Out. He's good. He's oh, been he's been fine. I I caught him barking in his sleep earlier. I recorded oh, it. Oh, what a cutie! <laughs> that boy. <laughs> uh, Princess Deadpool says multitasking between podcast and editing new retro reaction to Epic Pie Time, munching on some kokanee salmon my dad and I caught last weekend. To wash it down, I got an insert Apple Jack's poison joke name here. Sarah, have you ever gone fishing? I have. I know Matt's gone fishing. I've gone fishing, but I always throw it back. Hey, Gabe. Gabe! <laughs> there he is. Gabe, do you not like fish? Uh, I don't like killing things, unless they're people. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Spoken like a true... I wasn't ready. <laughs> murderer. Military man. Yes, yes. No, no. I, I, no. I actually do like fish. Okay, but it's definitely not my favorite. And so, yeah, I've, I've, I've done the catch and release thing, um, but never, um, never keep. I don't want to eat the fish, but I do want to make them really late for something. <laughs> um, I probably haven't <laughs> fished in like twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's. I enjoy fishing. Do you, you do, Laura? Yeah, I do. Do you? Is there anyone in particular you go fishing with? My Four? dad. Is that like the most generic answer ever? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's, is, it's, is there anyone you go fishing for? Oh, for? Um, yeah. Myself, I guess. Ah, now that you got philosophical with that. I yeah. wasn't expecting it, but I, yeah. I welcome it. Turned that one right around. You did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I like a record, baby. Hirosashi? Hirosashi, too. Hey. Oh, my gosh. The party's truly happening tonight. It's happening. It's happening. Uh, go back to this picture. <laughs> Something of note in this uh, in this picture. In the back, the uh, Infinity Gauntlet yeah. uh, is full penis off. Yes. Yeah. That. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, that's totally fishing is totally a thing to do with uh, with your pops. Uh, my dad hates fish and hated fishing, but my mom forced him to go fishing with me. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a Donald Duck fishing pole. A Donald Trump <laughs> fishing pole? A Donald <laughs> Trump fishing pole. Only $10,000. Yeah. $10, yeah. <laughs> you will catch my... all the biggest fish. You'll catch them right by the <laughs> mouth. <laughs> the, the, the worst thing about it is it was always too small. So, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Hmm. Surprising. Mm -hmm. I'm. I am still, in fact, talking about the, the Donald Duck version of this. <laughs> oh, Donald Trump version. Okay. okay. Well, we'll no no <laughs> and gold plated. Norse bronies. And if so you if you don't catch a fish, it says you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> 
We got Norse Brony. Um, this is from a while back, but I discovered my new favorite morning food, deep fried chicken with bacon and waffles covered in maple syrup. Why? Now that looks like that looks like Canadian bacon. Yeah, I, I was like, man, that's really pink bacon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I, I, I... it might be can, can I ask a question? Yeah. What defines Canadian bacon? Because I to this day do not know. Well, see here. It has to be grosser. Oh, yeah. okay. That's now I get it. It's basically no, I love, ham. Uh, yeah, it is basically ham. It's like a thin bacon texture type, but it's ham. Yeah. yeah. But here's what's crispy. weird. Do Canadians call Canadian bacon bacon and regular bacon like American bacon? I can actually answer that. Please do. Yes, they just call it bacon. <laughs> But 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 they call them both bacon. Like they don't say American bacon. They're like with bacon. And, no, and see, so like when the Creepers would say we're having bacon, they meant ham. And I learned not to get my hopes up. Oh. <laughs> but then at like hotels with real bacon, American bacon, true bacon, patriotic bacon. Yes. Um, they would just call that bacon too. And I was like, well, that's that's ridiculous. That's you have to distinguish it because for me, I can call a Lamborghini a car, and a you know. El Camino, they're both cars, but if I was gifted one, I'd be more excited about one than the other. So, Gabe. Dang, American bacon is a Lamborghini. <laughs> Correct. Would you, would, you say, <laughs> would you say that Canadian bacon is the reason that Canada doesn't have a problem? Uh, you cut out right there. Canadian bacon is the reason that Canada what? Doesn't have a border problem. Doesn't have a border pro- Well, there's a lot of reasons Canada doesn't have a border problem. But one... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> They're not close to Mexico. Let's uh, let's not. Let's start next to the big um, We've got anime bag. I got some buttered popcorn and Diet Coke from seeing Toy Story 4 today. <laughs> oh, I want to just imagine that Sarah is fun job trying to blow out that fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am sorry, everyone. <laughs> We're a. I- we're good. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Delicacy on a plate. Yes. Quiet Storm says, got a pizza hot pocket for the semi-perfect podcast. L-O-L. Yeah. It's a big plate. It's a big plate. Or it's a small hot pocket. I, I don't know which. Why um, let's see. Let's stick to the notification. see if we missed any. Oh, oh we yeah. totally did. Nora's got I... a pupper. Pupper! Did she eat it? Yeah. No. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Nora says, watching the podcast from my parents' place as I get ready for a trip to uh, Boca Raton uh, for okay. legal reasons and hanging with my dog, Lila. By the way, she says, hi. Well, here's my dinner of frozen chicken fingers. I didn't know Nora had a dog. Hi, I didn't know Lila. Nora had a dog. <laughs> I didn't either. Dang it, Nora. I'm supposed to know everything about you. Yeah. <laughs> then, it's, then, it's, take, then it'll be balanced. <laughs> all right uh anyone else that we may have missed no it looks like we got them all cool i actually for... did want to mention yeah. something to everyone here yeah so claire corlett wanted to join but was basically nervous and because she is always acts like she's tough but totally isn't was like <laughs> um oh no i just don't have time and i have crappy audio and no one wants to hear that and you know it's just kind of short notice and i don't know what i would even talk about and i don't know what i would say and you know um, she's like, maybe next time. So I think that everyone should just tweet her and just be like, it's okay to be scared. You know, maybe next time. <laughs> just make her feel better about that everyone gets scared <laughs> sometimes. Isn't, um, aren't MLP episodes going on a little bit of a hiatus? I think, I think right we're now? at the yeah, season. I believe so. Half season, halfway. Oh, I wasn't yeah. ready for but that. But there will be a special. So there, there might not be. I hate. Yeah, the special makes me angry. To talk about next week. Yeah, yeah, we won't have episodes next week. Would we want to do a jackpot? Oh, Sarah's asking if we want. Isn't the the special next week week, though? I don't know. The special, yes. No BS. There's a special. We can talk about the special, and then we can play jackpot. Sarah wants to play jackpot. Yes, it's yeah. There's a special town at the end of the rainbow, and there's all this stupid. I know. Spoilers. Jeez. Every, not, every time really. town, now I know every time go somebody to says this special. That happens right, right in the middle, right at the beginning. I mean, 
It's this. Okay, it's I'm mad about this one. The gay town is what happens at the beginning. Is what you're saying? So I was I was almost cast in this, like so so close. Normally I'm not allowed to talk about this, but whatever. The show's over, so I can. Yeah. Daniel did everything <laughs> I'm I'm getting getting cast in this. <laughs> I sang the song and everything, and then he's like, "All right, now when you submit your audition, I'm gonna actually ask. I'm gonna be like, well, can can I? I want the singer that I used for the demo. So just send me auditions, and I'll try to match it as close as possible." Nice. And then they never sent him my audition because yeah. there are people who work in the show who just have a vendetta against me. So there you go. It's all coming out now. Understandably, though. So. Of course, I mean, of course. So anyway, that. I know all about it, and I did the lines, and I recorded it, but I'm not in it. They replaced me with another guy. So, so, yeah, so what you're saying is we should do a Bronies rec to the game. Oh, yeah, I will. Yeah, totally. Can you send me your entire audition, and I'll just dub over it when I watch it? Yes. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> the, no, it's, it's, it's just it's, – it, it, it's happened way too many times, and it's for totally ridiculous reasons. So I don't know. It just annoys me. But there you go. You know what? I, I wasn't even allowed to talk about that before, so I'm happy that I can now. Yay. Ah. Well, the, the good news is we know that uh, things are going well for you. Oh, yeah. My, yeah, yeah. Very well. I'm very happy. Yeah. Yep. Well, That's um, I just want to say really quickly, every time you guys said the special, I kept thinking you were talking Lego about Lego movie. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> every single oh time. Oh, my gosh. The special. The special. Um... Chris so, uh, is our guest star. <laughs> yeah, here, yeah, Sarah, you could do a Chris Pratt impression. No, so. I can't. <laughs> Claire is texting me right now. What the f did you guys say or do? <laughs> I hate oh you God. all. Yeah, she's mad. Good job, everyone. Everybody, well, she, she can still <laughs> come in and join if she wants. She's. <laughs> I say uh, that. They say uh, you can still. It's not too late to join. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Tell Jeff she's a turd. All right, me? A turd. Yeah, it's you. It's your fault. Hey, right, she's Claire. not listening. She has no idea. On. What... <laughs> Game on. Jeez. Tell her she can be Saber Spark for today. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Tell her. No, let's convince her to get here, and then when she finally has the courage to join us, we'll say no. Just like, oh, oh sorry, we don't we don't allow um outside guests. Your audio quality is really bad, so we just I don't know. It's just embarrassing. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll just be real. We'll, we'll, we'll just be like, look, Claire, we like to you know have people that are relevant to the fandom. She and, said, uh, okay, this is great. She said, tell Stephen he doesn't deserve the ph in his name. He deserves a lowercase v. Oh. oh. Damn. Yeah. It's true though. He ain't even here. It's actually <laughs> true. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I don't know if a lot of people know the story, and I don't know how legal, <laughs> but I'll tell it anyways. That there was uh, a time where Saber ordered a pizza with his card, and he was too tired to get it. This was at a convention, so he had me go down to get it with his card. So I had to sign for it, and he, uh, with his permission, of course. So I of think course. that makes it just fine. But I misspelled his name when I signed. <laughs> yeah, you call yourself his friend. I didn't. I didn't um, even realize it. He looked at the the copy or whatever, and he's like, "You signed my name wrong." Wait, wait. You know how to spell my name, right? <laughs> <laughs> what ruined AC race bet? I just yeah. You, you had you had like a saber's voice with the cadence of Jay Holler. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So, um, you sound yeah, like a movie so film, this is typically the point where we do hit up uh, finding out what everyone's up to. So, Hiro Sashi, let's start with you. What's uh, what life, brother? I was gonna say boy, and then I'm like, that sounds too weird, so I'll call him brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, what's up, me? Work has been absolutely dreadful, but is now becoming less dreadful. Uh, it was so dreadful that it made someone from my team leave. Oh, um, was it you? Yeah. N n no. Oh, you said yeah, like real quick. <laughs> uh, um, it's, things are looking up. Today was a lot easier. Yesterday was a lot easier. The day before was a lot easier. So like, that's done. But, like for the past month, man, like, oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's honestly been what's up with me. I've been 
we studying Japanese and nothing oh, is going on right now. You guys should just speak Japanese the whole rest of this podcast you with don't each want other. Because I will. I, I don't want that. Kawaii des. Kawaii desu desu. <laughs> yeah. Senpai. Wow, he, he got the double des. Des <laughs> des. <laughs> What about uh, oh, I'm gonna speak Lord. Japanese right now and say <laughs> Kayete. Uh, yeah, well spoke. Re- hey, pa- <laughs> Matt. yes, sir. What's new with you, brother? Where do you want me to begin? I'm At getting some friends, or I have some friends coming into town over the weekend, which is gonna be lovely. Um, I have finally booked my flights for BronyCon, which oh. is quite exciting. That's a thing, that's that you're going, Woo! huh? Yes, Dude, yes, I am. Yes. Everybody, uh, uh, yeah. clap. Gotta meet Matt. Please at clap. Bronycon. Three, two, He's one. He's gonna clap. be the tallest person Same there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jack's plate. I saw him in the chat earlier. Hey, he's here. And I have a story. I have a story. About Jack. Um, assuming you haven't already heard the thing. We also have Britt, by the way. Britt Fields hanging out hey. in the chat. Brett got engaged at MLP MSP. Aww. Oh, Aww. congratulations! Aww. Aww. Awesome. With the help of key lime pie. pie, yeah, key lime pie, and it was good. It was good. Yo, Very you guys good. got pie. It was yeah. delicious. Delicious. Cool, Matt. So, was that the end of your? Uh, was that what's new with you? I mean, those are the big things. Got friends coming into town for the weekend, so I spent the last day, two days, three days. What day is today? Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. that lets you know where I am right now. Doing a week and a half's work worth of work in three days. Hmm. Nice. It why does everyone, why does everyone uh, work, work, work? Yeah. And I also, I also I went to Disneyland on. I, I went to Disneyland on Sunday. Nice. Oh, do you also Dude. go to Disneyland like every Sunday? Not every Sunday. We, Not we go to Disneyland so often We've, that that we both, Sarah and I, were at Disneyland, and then Matt, you were there with a friend. Yep. And and so we like we go to Disneyland so often that like the, this round we were like, hey, you know what? We'll catch you next time. And we we're just <laughs> doing our own things, and we actually apparently I've heard we bumped into each other. Well, oh, yeah. kind of. You, 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 guys walked on, you guys walked on by, and we just figured, you know what? Those two are out for a romantic day alone. If they saw us and wanted to chat, they would have. Yeah. But otherwise, let's leave we them did to not see y'all. It's because we were aggressively <laughs> making out the entire time. Uh, we were also in that case, filming. We didn't quite do that. <laughs> yeah, no, we were filming a, a promo. Yeah. Um, oh, while we were Disneyland made. so often. <laughs> 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 And we you know love what? every minute of it. You know what, Laura? What's new I'm with you? I'm sorry. I'm just goofing on you. <laughs> Laura, I didn't mind to hear about the latter half. I'm it sorry. Comes I messed, it comes from a place of honesty. I messed <laughs> up Laura's intro. I should have said, what's up, Laura, my brother? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I love that I legit didn't even get to hear the latter half of what Laura said because it's the, the former half was so wonderful that everyone just cracked up. I just said, like, oh, we go to Disneyland so often because we're so rich. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 Not after you buy a not. They, they just we're live actually there. Poor. Yeah. <laughs> we go. We, 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 go to we actually to, just uh, couldn't afford our bill work. one time and they made us stay and clean dishes indefinitely. <laughs> 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 that was more fun than work. But Laura, what's uh, what's new with you? Um, nothing. Dream Daddy. Oh my, my oh, Dream exciting. Daddy. Yeah, I was gonna wait and bring that up, but like, oh, Dream Daddy is on awesome. mobile now, so like, all of my life is just gone. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I can just date yeah, Dad. Yeah, all the dads. So it doesn't matter. Wait, wait, wait. What? What? Wait. What? 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 Is Dream what Daddy. Is this? Is a, so dad dating is a dad dating simulator. Yeah, Sarah just told you. Oh my gosh. Why the heck am I not playing it? It's amazing. You create I... a dad and you're a father in this game and you date the other hot dads that live in your neighborhood. That sounds gay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd I, I totally be into that. It's the most wholesome thing in the world, my little <laughs> 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 that sounds like fun. 
<laughs> I love those moments of just like pure honesty. <laughs> it's there comes a point where we all know what someone's gonna say, so either you might as well just say it. <laughs> exactly. You know what they're thinking. It's like if you don't say it, then you're just lying to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um cool. So Dream Daddy, anything else going on? Uh, my mom came to visit this weekend in my new apartment and stuff, so that was kind of cool. Nice. Yay. Yeah, I got to hang out with her and her like friend from high school who lives near where I live, which is kind of nice, so it's like family friend nearby. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. I mean, just been working, kind of hanging out. Nice. Awesome. About, uh, sauce. Look at us about- adults all working. Paleo, what's new with you, brother? You have to real, real, real. Sorry, I'm at Saber's house. I'm looking after his dog again. The boy. Yeah. Maybe the last time this year. I don't know. I'm not sure what Saber has planned for the rest of the year. But we, we oh, had it in, like since like since like March. So, <laughs> so at this point, it's yeah, like your house. You. I can tell you that yeah. he is thinking about going to New York at some point. And oh, he yeah? and I are also thinking about going to New York again because he wants to go for some Federator thing. And he told me we would go see Hamilton this year. So I want to go. Oh, look at well. us. We're so rich. And you are not <laughs> no, New York. <laughs> it's because of all of his YouTube money. Oh. <laughs> that was my Christmas gift. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a good Christmas gift. Right? The best Christmas gift are the ones that you say will probably do. <laughs> I mean, well, that dude, was what, play? Hell, six man. months ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Oh, so cool, Paleo. So you're hanging out at Saber's house. And... Yep. Nice, nice. Obviously, uh, part of a number of our recaps will be MLP, MSP, which we'll be talking about yeah. very soon. Um, and then uh, Gabe. Ah. What's new with you in the last two weeks besides us being able to understand you? Well, I, it, I, in your- oh God! <laughs> <laughs> that time it was fake. That time. So, so, so I've had the most eventful two weeks of probably my entire life. It mm. was. It's been crazy. So that's really eventful <laughs> for you. <laughs> yes. So I was in Mississippi with my brother. We finished our album. It's all done. Like we're we're like we finalized everything. It was great. Right after that, I flew up to do MLP MSPF, which was awesome. There was so much, so much fun. We all had a great time. And then I'm just like summarizing because there's a lot of like crazy stuff that happened during all this. Then I love, love I, the uh, released. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I wasn't sure how people would take that. But uh, yeah, you know, new music is always weird for when you haven't been doing it for a while. But I think it looked fun. It was very fun. That's how we're going to do all of it. Kind of like vlog style. But anyway, (laughs) so then I flew to LA uh, because I have uh, I had a project down there. And that was really horrible because because it was American Airlines and the flight was delayed. So I would have missed my connection. So then I had to buy like at the last minute, a flight on a different airline that I'd never heard of before, which ended up being in a different terminal. And I almost missed it. Like Ooh. I had to leave, go out of security. The subway going to the terminal was late. I was the last person on the plane and they were about to close the gate. So, but I made it on. <laughs> then I stayed with the Corlets for a while, which was really fun. Um, and uh, Claire and I watched Ma, which was terrifying. And then while we were watching the movie, the power went out and <laughs> it was the weirdest like crazy thing then right after that i went to steve odekirk's house because i'm doing a super secret project with him and i didn't know much about steve um and i actually asked him like the products under and projects under nda but i'm allowed to tell people i worked with him i didn't really know who he was i really only knew him from kung pao because he's the one who made that but i found out he wrote he's a screenwriter for bruce almighty evan almighty ace ventura like uh jimmy neutron um Patch Adams. Yeah, that that's him. He's the guy who wrote these movies. So he I stayed at his house. Oh my gosh. Like, okay, I should say I stayed at his houses because he has multiple houses on his estate. <clears throat> and it was the stupidest, craziest, like three days of recording ever. And he is awesome. I freaking love him. Like we became friends instantly. That was epic. And then yeah, then I I flew to Mississippi and packed up Nathaniel's house and we spent the last three days driving across America to Arizona and we got in last night. And so here Oh, I am so today. you guys are done? So Mississippi's no moss? 
Mississippi is no more. We are going to Hawaii in a couple of days. That's actually my Christmas present to the family. Where I'm taking the family to Alani, which I'm really looking forward to. I know you Babe, went there. Why didn't we synchronize this? Because I, I didn't know when you guys were going. Oh, because we're a bunch Gabe of wanted fools. to go to Everfree Northwest. <laughs> a bunch of damn fools. <laughs> but no, but I heard you guys went, and I, that's I, that's awesome. I'd actually love to pick your brain a bit about it because we're really like super looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, that was my week, and there's a lot of other stuff that happened too. That's just like it's just too long of a story. But I had a really good last two weeks. Nice, awesome. Mm. Uh, toodles, Sarah. Yes. What's what's your two weeks have had them I've, in it, brother? I've, I've played a lot of Breath of the Wild um, on the Switch. Been really cool. into that. And a private investigator came into my oh work my gosh. office. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Uh, so this woman walks in and she asks us at the front desk, like, hey, I'm looking for this person. I know that they live here, but um, I only have, I, I don't know what their site number is and whatever. And so we couldn't, um, we have a policy where we can't really Tell people, oh, here, yep. there's their site number. Uh, so my coworker was like, well, I, I'll need to call her on the phone. And and the woman, she's like, oh, no, no, no. I, you cannot give her any warning or she will, you know, <laughs> either leave the premises or, you know, uh, lock herself into her RV. Well, um, in that case, come back with a warrant. We'll talk yeah. then. Well, no, nah, but. How uh, would you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, so <laughs> we referred really it to our manager. To that question. But we referred it to our manager and she was explaining the situation where she was like tracking this person down to serve them paper, like papers of some sort. And Delicious. so, you know, our manager was like, okay, well, let's just, you know, let's go. And he like, they hopped on the golf cart and went to the yep. site and they served the papers and that was it. That you was can do that as that. a manager. Yeah. Well, dang. Yeah. I was just like, oh. <laughs> cool. So that's, that's been excitement. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. My turn? Yes, it's your yes. turn. All right, my turn, brother. So. Um, <laughs> All right, that yeah, was good okay. talk, right? Thanks. Thank What's you. next? Uh, MLB <laughs> MSP was, was the, uh, probably the biggest thing in the last two weeks. And Very like we said, we'll, we'll get talking about that here. Actually, probably, it'll probably be the next thing we discuss, and then we'll get into the episodes, just so we make sure that we can have a good, nice discussion about MLP MSBF. Oh, I meant to retweet that we were going to be talking about him. I'm going to do that right now. But um, yeah, uh, other than that, you know, kind of the theme for a lot of people has just been work. Um, uh, it's been very busy at work, but we're, we're now starting to get into calmer waters as far as, you know, projects and whatnot. A lot of them are starting to, to wrap up which is is nice um but uh yeah and as we discussed sarah and i went to disneyland uh over the weekend yeah. and we saw the outskirts of galaxy's edge we yeah. saw the, the oh, edge of galaxy we were edge. there a day before it opened to the public that's um, cool but yeah so we were galaxy's we were taking edge. advantage of the ghost town that disneyland was that day it was magnificent nice. i haven't seen yeah. a dead empty since the late 80s <laughs> it was nice. And then um Wait, what how old are you? <laughs> how old do you think I am? Uh 42. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, yeah. <laughs> I I should clarify. I remember this from a very young age. <laughs> You're 30. 30. <laughs> Dang. So um but yeah, so did that. Uh of course continuing working on you know the racing stuff on the weekend and Doing all that, been doing all heck of a lot of editing though, um, <clears throat> because I have two convention promos, both of which both conventions have already been announced. Uh, as far as BronyCon being one, um, and I am I'm gonna I'm I'm going for the emotional one on this one, guys. So buckle up oh, when geez. I do this promo. Yeah, hmm. um, can't do it's that. Gonna, emotional. It's though. literally just me crying with a whole bunch of eyeliner <laughs> dripping yeah. down my face. Uh -huh. For twenty five said that I wouldn't believe. It. <laughs> and then the promo that I filmed this weekend was uh, was Alicon's uh, promo video happening out in Adelaide, Australia. Whoa! Um, 
Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's me putting on my best uh, explorer. I guess we're gonna get going out to the outback and drop them. I'll, I'll, oh I'll, I'll be a million percent honest with you. Uh, I should probably put a disclaimer in there that I wasn't actively trying to do an Australian accent because uh -huh. I'm sure everyone's gonna assume that I was, and and then in the process they're gonna ask me to actually not come to <laughs> Alicante. I came out. Hey, how good? Hey, how good? Like it was very much a British accent, but I yelled "crikey" <gasps> a couple times. <laughs> crikey. Yeah, crikey. I go to Australia. Crikey. <laughs> Crikey. So, uh, but yeah, um, and uh, I, I, I hope that'll be entertaining. I always like doing kind of different things for promo videos, and this was definitely different. The, the, the thing I cracked up at myself was I, I don't plan a lot out. Uh, you know, like I don't script promo videos typically, except for like, oh, I want to mention this person or this person. Um, I, I, it's all kind of improv y, mm -hmm. and including the fact that I decided what I was going to do, I think like, once we got there, once we got to the convention or convention to the Disneyland park. Mm -hmm. um, so like I, I wasn't even dressed up for the role or anything. I'm like a regular Disneyland casual person one of a Zootopia shirt. in my Zootopia shirt, but I'm like, no. so I totally don't fit the part, but here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Nora says I should <laughs> do a leave Brittany alone video. Esque mm -hmm. style. Alone, right. <laughs> No. Oh, and then uh, and then Taylor saying that uh, he got to hear Tom and I call the super late model race from Rondell. So okay, so this will be kind of the my story time. But um, for for anyone that that doesn't know, uh, Tommy and I um, are the ones that do low budget TV and also the low budgets. Um, and uh, so the low budgets, you know, that series on my channel where we do demolition derbies and whatnot. But low budget TV is something we've been doing for years. And it, it, it continues to crack me up because we never got into doing low budget TV, which is our racing broadcasting. We never got into it with the intention, with the plan of doing this professionally. You know, it was all just, hey, this is fun to do. We're, we're going to do it. But people have enjoyed what Tommy and I do so much that now on, on channels like Mav TV, our voices are the ones calling some of the races that are showing up on, on cable television. Um, and it's funny because we now have actually a series that's going to be coming to Mav TV um, all about Outlaw Figure 8 racing. And it's our show. It's, awesome. it's so it's so weird. It's so weird because I've been on TV so many times that I'm like, oh yeah, there I am again. Like, like it sounds it sounds stupid, but it's weird because like it started. I think the the biggest one was going back to BroningCon 2014, uh, the cosplay contest. Comic book men <laughs> were there filming, and that was like, whoa, I'm on TV, crazy. And then of course the Steve Harvey show was definitely next level yeah. on that mm -hmm. front. And then now it's like, Oh, and now I do, you know, announcing and broadcasting. It's just funny. It's just like, wow. It's you cool. never know where life's going to take you sometimes. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that being said, speaking of life, taking us places, a number of us here in the podcast were at MLP, MSPF, Minneapolis, Minnesota's convention. And the last one, Oh, actually, before I jump into that, um, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> let me let me hop back a step. Uh, BronyCon. So, folks, once again, BronyCon has been super generous, and they have given uh, community guests badges to give away. And so we have two badges for BronyCon. So they, it's a free four-day badge. Yep. Um, we're going to be doing two different raffles here today, mm -hmm. and, and the way to collect your badge, you need to be present. You need to be here. Yeah. Uh, that way we, we know that it's... We'll need to see it. Like, if your name gets picked, we'll need to see you chime off in the chat being like, hey! Chime off in the chat. So, so that, way, that way we just, you know, it's, it's a, kind of an extra verification for us of, you know, where these are going. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, so in all... In all uh, terms of it if you haven't yet put in your name and you'd like to go to the semi-perfect podcast twitter sarah i think you might be able to link this uh yes um so we'll link this but if you if you can go to the semi-perfect podcast twitter don't forget to hit like on the page or follow or whatever the heck twitter does 
Um, <laughs> subscribe to our Twitter. And um, and there's a form that you just, what do you do? You fill it's out. It's a Google form. You'll need to put your um, username, either Twitter or Twitch or any social media that we can reach you by. Uh -huh. And we do require an email because that's what we're going to send your code for your BernieCon badge. Do we know how many people... Like, like, can you tell how many people have submitted? So the, it's going to be a okay. So names that are in there. Yeah. Um. Cool. So yeah. So for for you, uh, for all you folks trying to get them, good luck to each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and like we said, we're going to be doing two uh, of these uh, giveaways. So so there'll be one for one badge, one for the other badge. And yeah, good luck to each and every one of you. Yeah. Um, we're we're excited about what's to come here in a couple of months. But first, we will discuss what happened two weeks ago. Yeah. MLP, MSP, F. So, Paleo, you were there. I was? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got in with, uh, with Saber. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Yuck. <laughs> but uh, Gabe yeah, was also feeling there. Yes. I was. Gabe was, was there. there. I was yeah. there. It was fun. We did stuff. Yeah, we did lots of stuff. <laughs> we did so much stuff. <laughs> to to, to each just... other. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's I, funny. I... Sorry. What? Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I had, I had a great time and I wanted to do like, I want to do it again. Cider Fest would be great, but I don't know that they're going to want me because I was there last year with Michelle. So it's going to be like, but if you guys go, I'm gonna do what I can because I'd yeah, love yeah. that. Because the yeah, group yeah. together is just a freaking blast. Well, it's yeah. it, there's there's such a dynamic that we have. There is. Uh, oh my gosh, the Who's line and the panels are so much fun. I love it. I love it. And it's always an honor jumping up on on stage with you. When uh, yes, well, you guys pay me a lot to do that, so you know I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> it still feels like an honor, though. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the <laughs> small loan. It was, re it was, it was worth those uh, $3.75. Yeah, well, you know. It Wait, that's all he slushy. charged you? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Guys, oh. guys, look at Paleo. It basically pays just to have him on stage. That's true. That's <laughs> true. I mean, yeah, you're right. <laughs> he, he is the show. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I guess. So, of course, there is a vlog that's up. Uh, has all of the panels that we were a part of um, has uh, a whole bunch of the fun stuff that also took place around the convention ground. Some of our exploring around MLP MSP um, Saber Paleo and I were there uh, as community guests. Gabe was there as a VIP. Uh, um, Everywhere and... he goes is a VIP. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at my wedding, he's walking around going, where's the green room? <laughs> yeah, I want to get a snack, you guys. Where's the green room? <laughs> I got that reference. Um, yes, you did. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, um, to amongst the things that weren't captured in the vlog, one of the biggest things for me was my adventure getting to the airport to get to MLP MSP. It was horrendous. Yeah. I so the the traffic to LAX. Something must have happened. Uh, unless it's just LAX being crap lax yeah um because it according to our phone uh gps it said it was going to take us 45 minutes to get three blocks and at that point i'm like well now i'm gonna be late for my flight yeah um or you know if i if assuming that you know security's bad and all that so i'm like so i asked her to look up how long it would take to walk because i'm driving sarah's right and passing and she was basically dropping me off it was shorter to walk so i'm like well, okay, <laughs> see you later. So I jump out of the car and I'm walking, but unfortunately along the way, the sidewalk went away. And uh, upon Ooh. stepping onto the asphalt road, I also missed my step and my 80 pound backpack started going over my head. And at that point I was just somersaulting. Oh no. Yeah. yeah, it was not pretty, but uh, yeah, so that was, that was fun. Are you I laughing? can't believe you yeah. just left. I can't believe you just left Sarah to sit in traffic. <laughs> and she never got into the driver's seat. That was the best part. She just sat there in the passenger seat with her car sitting in for a couple hours. But yeah. Um, so as far as the convention goes, uh, really good time. 
Paley, I want to I want to hear from you um, what what you thought of MLP MSP and and maybe some highlights or whatnot. Yeah, it, it was really fun. Uh, I got to meet some uh, old friends there and new friends. I met a uh, uh, crazy Kari who's in the chat. Um, uh, she was there. I met up with her. Um, let's see, because I know we went to dinner a few times and we went to, to that park. Yes, that park was fun. It was a nice park. Yeah. You would have liked it, Sarah. What kind of park? Oh, I know, I know. You and Laura would have loved this park because there were dogs everywhere. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we, like you mentioned, Buca de Beppo one day where we all ate. You went to the mall, right? Yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, me and Kari got a uh, uh, an Uber and went around the mall. Though uh, we got there pretty late, so uh, we were around there for like maybe an hour and a half, just looking mm -hmm. around stuff because because all every everything in the mall closes at like nine thirty. So yeah, we didn't have much time, but uh, it was fun going around there. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> What about what? Uh, <clears throat> what about Gabe? What Hi highlights, thoughts of MLP MSP? Any 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 kind of side notes that you have from it? I I like smaller. Like I love big conventions because it's just it's insane. It's crazy. It's it's a rush, but it's also super super busy. I really really the thing I love the most about Ciderfest was just how relaxed it was. I got to talk with a lot of people for long periods of time. I didn't feel like I had to you know, rush through, you know, lines or anything like that. Um, the, the concert was really intimate. The, the, um, the panels were so much fun. The Pictionary panel was freaking hilarious. Way, you know, <laughs> totally awesome. Um, I did a, a escape room with Andrea and, and a bunch of the, um, the sponsors in the morning one morning. And I was not feeling it when I walked in, but it was a total blast. It was just, there was a lot that was really, really great about that convention. And um, I just had time, you know, I, I did, I didn't bring merch. I didn't bring, you know, I didn't have a like table in the vendor hall. No, no plans to do that. I just had time to enjoy the convention. I did do something I've never done at a convention before that I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Uh, courtesy of um, you, uh, Jeff. I mean, race. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to use your superhero. Name. <laughs> um, I was thinking, I was trying to think what you're for a second. But now I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I went to the, there was an after dark vendor hall and I'd never even, really even heard of something like that but i know they did it at another convention and then you're like you made a good point and your point was when are you gonna get to experience this like any other time and i was like yeah i probably should just better <laughs> man man that was weird <laughs> <laughs> to me i, I love them because like I, they they crack me up like i'm just like my god no, they're hilarious, and they had the awkward like silver quill riffing on the whole thing the whole time, and then that was brilliant. Yeah, they had some that was yeah, some people just kind of doing live commentary of people walking around looking at. As soon as I walk in, they're like, <laughs> "Oh, hey, so how would a griffin be in bed? I mean, how would it be too dangerous <laughs> with the beak and the talons?" And it's like, "What could?" And they and they went into a lot more detail than that, of course. Yeah, asking, of course, you know, throwing, you know suggestions for maybe possible answers for me and i pretended to not hear them but i heard them i heard them um, <laughs> one of the I vendors is like black griffin i didn't know you were into this stuff i'm like i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not <laughs> i mean i curious, am but I'm, not. I'm just curious, I'm as, curious as james, okay? james walking around holding all the merch he just bought in the last three minutes and he's I like this is for friends this is for my parents <laughs> so, Grandma, she really likes this. I bought a couple of things. Grandma likes you did. I didn't. They didn't. <laughs> wow. They just don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they they didn't. There was there was a severe lack of Judy Hops. There yeah, there was a lot of Nick Wild though. A lot of Nick. There's too much Nick. I like Nick, but seriously. Yeah, but I just don't get. I just don't get where people like. Vendors, guys, no, if, you're gonna no, make, if you're gonna make one, why wouldn't you make the other? Sarah, can you're an artist? Explain this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's furries. Definitely. You agree with me? Yeah, well, Nick is a dog. I'm sorry, they're, they're, the fox, main characters. But, I mean, they're, they're, they're in you know, foxes are sexy, people like foxes, so are rabbits. I feel like I taking the time to make it <laughs> would up your sales. <laughs> Uh, speaking of foxes, I got, to spend, I got to spend time with a fox two weeks ago. It was so cute, and now I want a fox. 
I I, I want to hear more about this the whole Fox thing because I know I know we've discussed it, but I'm still trying to get Sarah's actually on my side about the Judy docky right now. Thank you, Sarah. Does that mean that, that we can help help them stay in business when they make that docky? Um, maybe. <gasps> She's in baby. <laughs> I love how that's like all the confirmation Jeff needs. Pretty much. <laughs> She's not ready. She didn't say no. <laughs> that means uh, we won't get in that topic. Um, but yeah, no, it uh, <laughs> it was it was a great convention. Um, it was. What's what's interesting? I don't know if a lot of people realize this because I know that the big conversation piece, especially this year, because the show's ending wow. and BronyCon's coming to an end, and technically MLP MSB ended, but you know it also came back to end. Resurrected, like, yeah. I think a cool gesture, by the way, by Charlie and his team. Oh yeah, yeah. Because oh, Charlie, they're awesome. They really are, and and they do such a good job with these conventions, and the fact that they said, you know what, we we have the resources to to make this happen one more time uh, and i think it's cool and, and this is the big thing for me and i don't think i think it went overlooked that mlp msp last happened in 2016 at the same venue that mlp mspf the one we just did 2019's version uh was at so same location but this year's convention mlp mspf had a higher attendance than MLP MSP 2016 did. So just think mm. about that. The convention actually grew in size. Okay, no, I, I, it's not even a, it's a point for me because the thing is, everybody that I've talked to, every brony that I've talked to, intends to watch the new generation when it comes out, or at least give it a chance. So for me, I think it's silly for anybody to assume. But the fandom's going to end because the show does. I mean, the fandom ends when people stop caring about it, and I haven't really sensed that. So I don't know. There you go. Uh, yeah. It seems like a big deal, you know. Or it is a big deal. It's sad to see it end, but at the same time, this whole fandom was able to embrace Equestria Girls, and that's you know way out there. So I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel about it. I don't no, see it. No, I and I I agree. I think I think we're I think things will be okay. Um, like, you know, I think a lot of people, because we've had this question, Gabe, you've probably gotten this question. I know Saber and I have um, on, on some panels that we've been on where, you know, people ask, they're like, so when the show ends, what are you guys going to do? And I'm like, well, I, I mean, keep on keep doing stuff. <laughs> like, I, I'm not just going to drop everything and be like, all right, all done. You know, I, I still feel like there's a a lot to do with the current content that's out there. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we, I, again, I, I, the conventions that we have out there right now, um, I feel, I feel good about, I'm not saying that we'll always have as many as we have this year. Um, obviously two of them are going away, MSP and, and BronyCon, but yeah, no, I, I was curious about MSP's attendance because BronyCon, I, I feel like, might be pulling some people from other conventions. Just because, again, it's the last year for BronyCon. Anyone that budgets for one convention, this is the year they're going to say, okay, I will budget for BronyCon, and then I'll be back at this convention next year if they're having it. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the conventions actually, while have been slightly down on some of their attendance, and, and like I said, I attribute some of that to BronyCon, Um because there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of people yeah. at BronyCon. Yeah. Um, I was impressed to see MLP MSPF actually rise in attendance. So, so that was again a uh, great work it's by because you were there. It's because I was there. No. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was it was great. And Gabe, love that you were there. Um, oh, me too. It was so much you know. fun. Oh, yeah. that reminds me about attendance. Uh, something that Jax <laughs> told me. I was like, what? I was man, getting yeah, to this man, yeah. part, by the way, but go on. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> we were going up to the escalator going to uh, the convention. He said, so how many people you think are, are here? Like a hundred? I'm like a <laughs> hundred. Like, uh, have you? <laughs> have you counted? <laughs> yeah, I will I, say, I don't, think, I, I don't think you can accurately like. Surmise, yeah, if it's above yeah. five, it, it could be <laughs> between a hundred and a million. Because I said if like if it was if it was a hundred, it would be a lot more empty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. just count. I mean, this is what I do. I count the chairs vertically and then laterally and then apply. It's a really so, good, quick, easy way. So if anyone wonders what Gabe's doing on a panel, 
he's not actually thinking about your questions. He's counting the chairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it everybody? <laughs> <laughs> but Paleo brought up a great point. Jack's Blade. That, that guy got me good. In fact, I think he got all of us good. <laughs> I, hey, Leo, how did, when did you find out Jax was there? It was when uh, Sarah and I got in uh, to the hotel, and we were greeting um, uh, Sydney and Kari in the lobby, and then Jax just comes up and bumps into Saber. <laughs> and then I look back, and I'm like, Jax? <laughs> so were you yeah. the first one to recognize him? Yeah. Um, like, when me and Saber got in, like, I recognized yeah. them. But then, uh, like, uh, it, it took Saber a minute. It was like, what? what? <laughs> God, yeah. So, <laughs> and then Gabe, when did you find out Jax was there? Uh, I came into uh, your guys' room because I thought I was rooming with you, but then I wasn't. But then I came into your room anyway. And um, we, you get, you offered me some some pizza, which was very kind and delicious. Yeah. And then, um, I didn't get to really enjoy. I actually almost inhaled it because Jax comes up from behind the bed. <laughs> I didn't even hear what he said. I Wait, he was he was hiding when you got in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he, and then and then he told me how he was going to get you, which is another story entirely. Yeah. So so everybody, I guess, was in on this except me, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. Brony's React panel um, was the first panel that we did. It was noon on Friday, and I'm sitting on my cameras and I see. Some guy wearing his Spider-Man outfit and mask and all. And, of course, I think nothing of it because I've been to enough of these conventions that that kind of thing just doesn't faze me. I'm like, cool, cosplayers. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I even nodded at Jax, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like a smile and nod. And I'm setting things up. And I remember, I do vividly remember seeing Gabe take a picture of this Spider-Man costume person. <laughs> Not realizing there was a reason that he was taking this picture while I was setting up my camera right next to Jack's blade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so I'm just like, oh, Gabe must just be enjoying that there's a Spider-Man in the audience like I am. So we start the, uh, the panel, and um, I think it was Saber, or, or somebody started like, maybe it was you, Gabe. Somebody was starting to say like, oh yeah, there might be other people in the audience who were in Brony's React. Which yep. I also didn't think too much into because I knew uh, people like Jay Holler, who's been in a Bronies React, was in the audience. And, um, and so I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, let's acknowledge them. And then some, some individual, oh, look, it's the Spider-Man person, jumps up on stage. And I'm just like, <laughs> well, it's going to be one of these panels, I guess. <laughs> and, and Jax goes to take off his mask. And I saw like... I, I saw his like his chin mm -hmm. and was like I still wasn't thinking anything of it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, there's someone up here. And then the mask comes off and there's Jack Splade with that big old goofy grin of his. <laughs> and I'm just confused. <laughs> because I, I literally like I'm sitting there going, Oh my god, did I forget that Jack Splade was gonna be here? <laughs> <laughs> like, oops that's, yeah i was like that's terrible of me like i didn't even i didn't, I didn't even think and then and then it becomes clear to me the way everyone's responding to the situation that no it is a surprise that jack's blade was here and i, I loved it i i was like that uh, i love that's my kind of prank right there those are the kind of pranks i live for and the fact that jack's pulled his off so well by by not telling anybody except i think jay holler that he was going to be there so he could set things up. It was brilliant. It was it was wonderfully played by Jack. It was very so, well done. I love it. It was it was so great. Definitely, like I kid you not, that was a highlight of my convention. Was was yeah. Jack's pulling that on us? Because <laughs> Jack's is a very fun individual. If, if you've never had a chance to meet him, um, he do. he's yeah do <laughs> he's so lively. He's so full and full of energy and. It's just really a, a a great guy. Seriously, he's a walking so. party. He is. He is. Um, but yeah. So so I mean to to round it up, MLP MSPF, a fantastic send off. Uh, Minneapolis. The, this convention MSP has really meant a lot to us. Um, it's a convention again, 2014 with Saber Henry Gabe and I. <laughs> doing Who's Line by ourselves for the first time. And um, 
you know that it it just was so it was so cool to to be able to put all that together. I'm trying to remember, Paleo, were you the host that year in 2014? Uh, I don't think so. I think Draft was. Was Draft the host? Yeah, okay. yeah. I was trying to think. I'm like, what did we do for that one? But yeah, I know in 2016 that's when I joined Draft. That's right. That's right. Uh, and uh, Garnica was on stage with that one. So yeah. It was it was great. It was so much fun. The people that were there were fantastic. I know there's a number of uh, people in the chat that that joined us um, that were, or I should say, we're at MLP MSP, um, and and yeah, so so much fun. Loved the send off and made some excellent memories over the weekend. What do you think of that, Sarah? Sounds like a fun time. So it was a fun time. Um. Sarah, should we yes. remind people again that the BronyCon raffle is happening? Yes, it's happening. Um, check out the Semi Perfect Podcast Twitter. I retweeted um, all the information that you would need to know. It's a Google form that you'll have to submit your um, your username and your email. Yep. Let me just find the link to that one time so I can put it in the chat. I sprung this one on the Sarah. When are, when are we? What are we announcing? What do you think? Uh, we'll we'll do those um, before Q and A. So, yeah, let's see. We're going to be discussing the MLP episodes. Uh, we got some potential movie talk. Oh my god, we should talk about Sabers. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like the only ones I can we can really talk about are Aladdin. I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll we'll definitely look at. Of those. Okay. Well, if we have time, it's already seven o'clock. Seven a six. What? Yeah. Uh, All right. So let's. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about the new My Little Pony episodes. So if you have not watched them, there will be a spoiler screen, like so. And the spoiler screen will stay up as long as we're discussing them. When the screen goes away, it is safe to. And guys. This is yeah. actually probably a good so I haven't seen it yet, but my family is screaming at me because we're all gonna go out to eat a so Where I have to go. Where are you eating? Culver's. Oh my god. Culver's Culver's? Yeah. There's a new what one. There's, there's a, it, I've not had it in years, but there's a new one here. We, Tommy and I so. went when we went to Idaho mm -hmm. recently, <laughs> Tommy and I saw that there was a Culver's and went, hey, let's eat there. Because Dude. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Call it ice cream. When you when you get it, call it ice cream. They hate yeah, that. they're going to love that. They won't be pissed at all. Culver's is like a fast food. I thought it was more of like a Milwaukee it's, area. It is. It's classy fast food. Yeah, it is. That's, that's why it surprised me. It's very Midwestern, but here it is. Here we are in the South. Miracles right, do get, come true. Dreams do happen. I will drink it all. All right. Well, uh, Gabe, you have a wonderful time eating Culver's. I love you all so, so hard, and I'll miss you. And I hopefully just talk to you all soon. All right, Gabe. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so for those that don't know, Culver's again is a fast food restaurant um, where it's like it's a what do they call them? Butter burgers is what they have. Um, so it's a burger joint, but they also have like really good uh, frozen. Or is it? I don't even know if they call it frozen, but it's it's frozen custard. Uh -huh. I think. Yeah. Oh God! Now I'm wondering if probably. I'm screwing this up. That's probably right. I don't know. I just know I called it ice cream once, and everyone got mad. I like how people that left for the spoilers right now have no idea why everyone's talking about Culver's. But yeah. all right, so MLP MSP. Uh, let me try that again. My Little Pony episode time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the first episode we're talking about today is called The Last Crusade. And in this episode, unexpected visitors to Ponyville threaten to break up the Cutie Mark Crusaders forever. Forever. <laughs> All right. Last Crusade. Yeah. Who's got opinions on this one? I have one thing to say. Yeah. Yes. I feel like this episode would have felt more organic if it had come like shortly after the CMCs got their Cutie Marks. Mm hmm. Because at this point, it kind of just feels like, a, like, uh, n no, Scootaloo has parents. She's not an orphan. See, look at her parents and her aunts, and yeah, they just, for, they just forgot she was a character. Yeah, for, 
four seasons. Because if it had happened like shortly after they got their cutie marks and it was like, hey, mom and dad, no, I can't mm. leave. And you've been established as characters up to this point, you know, before the last season of the show. Yeah. And I can give you a reason why I have to stay in Pony Bowl because I have all this work ahead of me and that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's just kind of like, okay, I guess we're doing this one now. And like, yeah. it's. I was actually. So I watched this episode for the first time last night. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was actually kind of disappointed when Scootaloo announced that her parents were coming to town. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was disappointed oh, when great. she said, have parents. we're at my house. <laughs> I was like, you don't have a house. Yeah. Right. So I got a lot of issues with this episode, actually. Oh? Yeah. I, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm struggling to figure out exactly what, lesson this was trying to teach because i i was thinking like you know it's the last season maybe they will go all out with this one and and have kind of the i i guess you could kind of compare it to like inside out situation where someone's got to move and coping with you know saying goodbye to your friends but also realizing that it's not truly 100% 100% goodbye. But no, kids, if you don't like that your parents are moving, you can just live by yourself. I, I was like... An eight-year-old in your own house. This is so unrealistic <laughs> to me. Like, like what, what parent says, you know what, 10-year-old daughter, you're right. You can stay here. We don't need to be a family. Like... I feel like it would have been better if it had already been established that Sweetie Belle lived with her aunts. But, like, they left, like, at scootily? the beginning... Yeah, sorry. Scootaloo's, <laughs> Claire's over there like, going, what? I thought that was going to be the thing where she like actually lived with her aunts in Ponyville. But then they left at the beginning of the episode. Which and confused I'm just like, me. What? She I didn't lives understand. by herself? Well, well, I like how they're like, yeah, we have this complicated thing set up where, you know. So on, on Wednesday through Friday, Rainbow Dash will be sitting you. And then uh, on Saturday and Sunday, Rarity will come by. And then the aunts will be back Monday uh, up to Wednesday. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, what? What is this? You know, because your parents are dead. I mean, traveling across Equestria. Yeah, but, they're, but they're like, the Thornberry is it, parents. Is it just <laughs> is it just me? Like I I thought that this was so unrealistic. That yeah. that the resolution was the parents saying, "Oh, that, okay, that's that's fine. You can stay here." I think yeah. like the weird thing, or like the, the I don't want to say loophole, but loophole about that is like. They've addressed that, like, the Cutie Mark Crusaders are kind of, like, you know, aging as the show goes on. Like, they had the whole one where, like, Sweetie Belle's like, oh, I'm not a kid anymore, and where are you treating me like a kid, whatever. But it's like, they still look really tiny. Yeah. And they still go to, like, Cheerilee's one-room schoolhouse where everyone's in kindergarten. It's like, I don't really know what's happening. Maybe, uh, you know, make some more models in which they look older, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) We can't do that. We need to make more toys. (laughs) It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just so, like, I, because I I do feel like. I've been on mute. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, you have. (laughs) Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to, like, say anything. Hero, what are are your thoughts on this episode before I I I think the one. I agree with you. That's unrealistic. The parents are like, well, what are we going to do, Bonnie? I guess we got to go leave our child here in Ponyville. She, she said she wants to be here. So what can we do as parents? Um, mm-hmm. I think the one reason I was like, okay, I'll let that slide is because they made it seem like the Kini Mark Crusaders, like, they have a job. They, they yeah. are, like, required there. And they're like, dang, we can't. You can't just take that away because we want our family question mark. Like it's so weird. <laughs> but I think that's the one reason I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> She's gotta do work. See, here's the thing though, and and don't don't get me wrong, I've found it very endearing what the Cutie Mark Crusaders have done and become. Yeah. But I it still feels like it's it's like an after school club to me. Mm-hmm. Not like like oh this is my career i have to do this like it it it's weird that it i feel like i feel like the show was trying to convince me on this episode like like no seriously imagine if the cutie mark crusaders weren't around 
what will happen then? It's like, well, people would continue getting their cutie marks like how they always have. Question yeah, mark. like they have forever, and that's <laughs> uh, like I see them. Like, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say I, I see them like as a as a counseling group, maybe that like yeah. help yeah. ponies realize they have the potential. But what were you gonna say, Laura? It was just more that like it seems like they're in this weird like place where the show isn't sure if they're children or if they're adults and like where to put them and like how to like utilize them because like when Scootaloo is telling her parents, oh, like, like, oh no, I need to stay because it's my job. It's like, it's like, oh, okay, that's because you're an adult and you have responsibilities versus like, <clears throat> no, I'm just dicking around doing everything possible <laughs> to get. I need to hang with out friends. with my twins. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> And we're going to school every day to learn how to count or whatever. Like I don't know what they do. <laughs> what age are you? I, I like I, I wouldn't have no idea what age they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just yeah, know that Cheerly was like really traumatized by that that weird yeah. figure that got. Oh into my the... god, yes. Yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, actually. He just like her parents were just like, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if like we released this, like, wild animal in the classroom <laughs> and endangered the lives of the students to make a really sweet entrance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the parents are pretty responsible in a lot of ways. In yeah. many ways. <laughs> Very many ways, yes. <laughs> it's... I, I just... Yeah. I'm... I, I, I guess I just thought for a second that I knew where this episode was going. And which again was me thinking that it was going to be an episode, which I was going to be impressed that they do it in 30 minutes, but it was essentially going to be yeah. Scootaloo leaving yeah. Ponyville. And I'm like, that's huge. That's a big lesson. Kids, that happens to kids all the time. Yeah. Where, I, I, you know, a kid yeah. has friends and parents got to move. And guess what? Sorry, you can't stay. You know, and, and I just. I was like, wow, this is a huge topic that they're going to do. And, you know, I I really didn't think the parents were going to budge. And then they did. And I was like, well, that don't happen. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I feel like they're, they're, this episode had, a, to me. A <laughs> but then it would have been really dark for kids. Yeah, but it's like. Welcome oh, to life, it, I guess. Yeah, it's an oh, exciting no. episode. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. I I, I don't know but if it needs to be dark. Uh, they'll go over kids' heads, I would think. Some kids, like, depending on their age. It's just yeah, like, I, I, very on the nose. I feel like while it would be dark for kids, it's something that, you know, especially if know. there's, because there could be kids watching that, you know, they know that they're going to be moving in three, <laughs> and they know they're going to be leaving their friends behind, and it's yeah. like, you know, maybe this is a lesson for them to. No, it's true because like kids move all the time. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I was just playing with Saber's chair here. It makes a sound. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I was like, is that the cat? But uh, go on, Laura. What were you saying? I don't know. <laughs> They're no, genuinely boys. like, I don't, what was I gonna say? <laughs> kids move all the time, and it's like you know, it's that's an important thing to like understand that like even though you move away, you don't have to like renounce your friends and like give up your whole life it's like no nah, it's like you know when you're a little kid you kind of just have to do what your family does and yeah. what happens i, I may be looking i may be looking too far into this but i almost feel like this episode could be discouraging the kids that need to move yeah because <laughs> mm-hmm. they're like like, doesn't it kind of like encourage children to be like, yep. if I try hard enough, my parents won't make us move. Well, Scootaloo got to stay in Ponyville, Mom. <laughs> yeah, Mom. Jeez, That's Mom. nice, Amanda. It's good to see you for the first time in nine years. <laughs> Jesus. Whoa, if, oh my god, if a kid like threw that kind of shade at them. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god. Yeah, it that well that that's that's the different situation that Scootaloo is in is that her, her parents were never there in the first place. Like it's not going to be like the same situation for a kid where their parents are moving and they've been with their parents for their whole mm-hmm. lives. That's I feel like that's you thinking with your thirty year old brain. I think kids are just gonna see Scootaloo didn't have to move. I don't want to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I agree with what you're saying, Paleo. That like essentially they're just saying, well, it's it's been working, so. We'll just keep it 
this way, but yeah, like I, yeah, I, that was, that's, I'll leave it at that for me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, even if it's your broken family. Okay. (laughs) I'll just say it. Scootaloo's aunts are better parents to her than her parents, so why not yeah. just let them be her parents anyway? I'm, so- yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I I have to because I noticed it. It's like the first thing I noticed. Call me whatever you care. I don't care. Um, Big Auntie it. Lofty and Aunt Holiday. Why is Aunt Holiday so thick? Like she's a thick lady. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, girl. <laughs> 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 oh my Damn god. Girl. Yeah. That's a good point. Well didn't what didn't the ants end up wanting to move to Ponyville? Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, which wasn't that like after now Scootaloo we'll, or, like now all those we'll supervise. I thought they already lived there. Yeah, Why I know. It was so I weird. And then they went back to their house and wherever the Why fuck? didn't they just live there? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Freaking. They just like buy Scootaloo's parents' house and be like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Don't move your shit. Like, we live here now. Lesbians, am I right? <laughs> well, I'm not the thing you. Uh, I like that they they brought over the same ants that were in the book previously. Mm-hmm. I appreciate yeah. that too. Yeah. Yep. So the, these were. Pre-existing characters. Only true nerds, nerds will know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I also, I think, I forget if I had discussed it with you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. No, we hadn't discussed this episode. But I, I liked how they did did this. It, yep. it wasn't, it wasn't in your face. It was just normal. Yeah. It was just, yep, these are my aunts. Yeah. You know. And I feel like that's that kind of stuff with media is what normalizes it. Yeah. For oh, society in general. <laughs> yeah. There's another yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Some people, I'm not going to name who, but uh, people I know. Uh <laughs> and I I don't I just assumed they were lesbians. I don't know why, but then other people assumed they were like uh the the aunts in Sabrina the Teenage Witch where they were just mm-hmm. aunts that lived together. They yeah. could be sisters. They aren't though. Well, I assumed that they were lesbians like in, in, because everyone who worked on the comics and the show said that they were lesbians. That's true. Yeah. And also, they, they, they were they making me. gestures at the, like the end of the episode that probably indicate more of like a romantic relationship. I know. I could. I couldn't believe that they could do that with their hooves. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that you couldn't think that they could do like sexual dances with their hooves? When you've been watching nine seasons of this show, <laughs> <laughs> like so much goddamn shipping. <laughs> I've learned so much in the nine yeah. years about how horses work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how, and They're how they horses? Know. Ponies. Some, I, of, some, of the, some of the animation I see leads me to <laughs> not believe they are horses. <laughs> Can I have a little story? Yeah. So one of my friends, uh, one of my best friends growing up, she had... Um, two aunts that were a couple and it literally <gasps> took me the longest time to figure out that they were actually like a lesbian couple but what makes it even funnier is like my little like 10 year old self in their house was looking at pictures like they had pictures of naked women hanging on their walls what an interesting thing to have on their <laughs> wall. And I'm just like, huh. And then like a so, few So they were later, like super lesbians. Um, yeah. I mean, they were like, they, they, they have, were like, we need to have naked everyone. I don't, I don't know. If, if, you, if you have a naked woman on your... <laughs> there were just some images sprinkled. And since I'm a nosy person, I like to look at all the art and stuff in their people's houses. And, I'm, and there's like this, uh, there's, it was a photograph of like a line of naked women just kind of like standing all coolly together. And I'm like, huh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm, just going later, to I'm, like, I'm just going to assert that being lesbian has nothing to do with having naked women art naked in your house. Oh, I know, but like my Trust me, very I'm... heterosexual grandparents had like this statue, like some weird art statue that I never understood because I was like a kid of this woman like leaning back and she had like super long hair and like her boobs were just hanging out. I'm like, I don't get it because I'm a child. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, that's what that was. I, I absolutely understand it, but I I feel like some line like 
dots were lined up for me where I'm like, oh, so that's why they had like all these pictures. Of, <laughs> I don't know. Were they artistic news or were they like oh, full like, on no, spreads? No artistic. Oh, that would have been better. Yeah. But it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure got our uh, feel of that episode, didn't we? <laughs> Good news. There was another one. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, well, another one. one talks read about this one. I, I I have opinions on this one too. Between Dark and Dawn. Uh, I episode. loved it. I, I love it. Calm down, everybody. Take a bucket list sister vacation while Twilight and her friends struggle to cover the princess's many royal duties alone. Okay, Laura, go. I loved it. It was so much fun. It was the everyday doing normal shit. Luna and Celestia episode that I've been waiting for for nine years. And it was <laughs> fun. You got to see Luna male, male. Oh my god. Luna's like bun and Celestia's ponytail and their dumb <laughs> little Hawaiian shirts. I was losing it. It was so <laughs> great. I love Luna and Celestia, but I hated what the main six were doing because they were a bunch of dumbasses. Oh yeah, they were being so stupid. I like, ignore <laughs> that shit because that doesn't matter. <laughs> I appreciate Twilight's it. just like, help, fuck you, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> I do appreciate that every other person in the main six was looking at Twilight like, you yep. suck. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Applejack had quite the face for her and deserved the Like, uh, I think we're starting like, literally... to knock some sense into her. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Twilight literally went through this, the premiere episode. Where she's like, oh, I guess part of, you know, being a leader is knowing when to ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> you it's think you can let in just once and... <laughs> oh, my God. Hello. Hey, it's hey. Saber Sport. Saber. Whoa, who's hey. that? That's Howdy, me. stranger. How y'all doing? Good. Oh. We, were, we were just talking about... Uh, actually, you, actually, we're in the middle of talking about the episodes. Yeah. Oh, Okay. I actually watched them, so I know you're talking about. Well, well, let's let's uh, let's pause for a second here and just tell me your thoughts on the Scootaloo parent aunt episode. It was interesting, but <laughs> let me actually before I say that, I bought some uh, T-shirts for BronyCon, and I bought one for Tommy Oliver. So I went on this uh, website, and I'm like, I just want to look for the ugliest <clears throat> pony shirts possible. That's all I want. And there was this one with Doom Guy. And like the Doom logo, but instead it says Scootaloo in like big caps. And it like they recolor the Doom guy, it looks like Scootaloo, and it looks so <laughs> stupid. And I love it. So, of course, I bought that for Tom. But, yeah. um, I swear so to God, episode, Stephen Carver, if you didn't buy me an ugly pony shirt, I'm gonna be very upset. I, I, I got one for you, you're gonna like it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, I'm going all out for Bernie Con. Um, so the episode, I uh, I have a grudge, or I, I'm 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 disappointing Scootaloo's parents because they, uh, they it, it, there's some times in cartoons where like events transpire, and it's like this could have been avoided if people just talked, which I know that that's kind of the that's most idea. of the episode. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the story. That's what they're going for. Like, you know, we should communicate, which is a good you know, but like for the parents just to show up out of nowhere, <laughs> a bunch of vagabonds. And then they're like, we're going to move you out without even talking to you. I'm like, really? That's, uh, that's kind of douchey. And, I mean, I appreciate you know, Skulu's aunts for being understanding and having her back and the CMC sticking together. But, I mean, it was all right. But then the episode that came afterwards blew it out of the water, like, tenfold. So that's the episode that we're discussing. Now, quick question for you. How long mm -hmm. are you going to be able to join us? Are you just going to be on for a couple I can talk for a little bit. I, I just finished talking to the family and going back to my room, so I can hang out for a bit and talk with you guys. Okay. okay. Only reason I ask is because I know we're getting a slight echo from you, so I was going to say just oh, whenever Oh, I can turn things down a bit. Or let me get my headphones. I've had ones I can okay. plug in and see if that helps out. Cool. Perfect. By the way, I, <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell... Uh, I told Laura this via text, but I saw nature in action today. Sarah, oh you're going to like this. Well, maybe you like it. I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll explain why. So uh, we've already talked was... about the after dark panel. So... <laughs> Here, let me get my headphones on first before I keep talking. One second. Okay. All right. Okay. I was just doing a quick check. So, um, 
So Saber Spark joining us here with the story. Sounds like he's got his headphones. Do I sound any better? Check. Check. I still My hear check myself. Check. <laughs> How can you hear yourself? That's so bizarre. I have headphones on. Check. Check. Uh, yeah, I heard that too. Is it coming from someone else? Come back. Is it me? Might be. You know, I didn't even look. No, that's coming from Saber. Do it again. Check. Just leave and come back. Like, leave Discord entirely. Close it. And wow. Just yeah. go. <laughs> Can't you see we don't want you anymore? <laughs> so we're just sorting out this. Now the suspense is really building. Mm-hmm. So we, already, we already have uh, two people that have expressed love for this episode of Between Dark and Dawn. So while Saber's uh, taking care of this, we'll have him come back to a story. But... Um, so yeah, I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts on Between Dark and Dawn, the episode with Luna and Celestia being sisters and going on a vacation. Wait, who said they loved it so far? Me! Uh, Laura yeah. and Saber. And me. This... It's, you... the, it's my favorite episode of the season, easily. Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sarah? What do you think of it? It was a fun episode. All right. You want to do a mic check? Check. Check. Okay. I, we so still like hear myself weird. loud and clear. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Try it again. Check. There you go. <gasps> that worked. Huh? That's so weird that y'all can hear yourselves like that. Here, do do one more. Check. Nothing. Okay. All right, cool. Hey, Saber, clap for us. Hey. Clap. Here you go. Thank you. No, he said clap for us. <laughs> <laughs> clap. Okay. <Hold> on. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So um so yeah Saber we're discussing between dark and dawn and then and then we're going to come back to your 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 nature story that Yeah you yeah have. go for it. Go for um it. so 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 you like the episode Hiro Sashi you were just saying you really like this episode? Yeah. So good. Laura of course said she liked it. Sarah you said you had fun with it. Paleo what did you think of this? Oh I I really liked it. It was fun. I had fun with this episode too, but <laughs> there is a but from me. Yeah. I feel like Luna and Celestia. I don't know. I I, I feel like the sister like, arguing thing is tired. Um, like Luna and Celestia can't just have fun as sisters. They always have to get in a fight over stuff, and I'm like. Guys, <laughs> sisters don't always fight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone knows better than me. I don't know. <sighs> Sarah, you have a sister. Yeah, I don't fight with like I used to when we were kids, but n- not as adults. We're able to, you know, <laughs> talk it, things out. It's all that. It's I'm all that. willing to give them this, though, because you have to understand that this is a new arena for them. So maybe that's why they're fighting. Now, if it was in the throne room, it's like, come on, we've done this. But this is them, like, letting their hair down by them putting their hair up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, by the way, the designs, I, I adore. When Laura and I watched it, we were squeeing. We're like, ah! <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Luna, I, I yeah. think the cutest part of the episode, I actually, like, it melded my heart, at my heart is when Luna was like, I bought us matching T-shirts. And she, like, I was so glad they put this in the show, but she was like, huh, 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 and she was, like, stomping in place out of excitement like a nerd. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute, right? Literally <laughs> everything <laughs> Luna does in this episode just makes me so goddamn happy. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And Celeste has got so much more personality. Because Paleo and I, a few days ago, we were watching, um, like, the top 10 pony videos of, like, 2014. And, and there's two versions of Celestia that we always see it's either deep brooding i am celestia and i will fight you sister or i'll fight this villain i'm super serious the whatever or hey i'm banana celestia i'm gonna fuck a banana or whatever excuse me essentially you know silly celestia or deep brooding celestia and, and this current celestia in the episode was great because she's like you know having fun she hasn't forgotten all of her royal duties um, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I hear you, Sarah and Race, on the like them fighting, but at the same time, I still see their relationship budding <clears throat> in the last season, and um, <laughs> and uh, you know, right on time. But yeah, all in all, I, I thought it was great. I, I the song was great. B plot was pretty funny with 
um the, the fancy pants being like you guys stupid like we were hired for this <laughs> like oh, please. Oh. see when, when i saw fancy pants getting mad i was like oh no you like this chill bro and then i was like wait no i i, I completely That's understand why you'd be getting frustrated That's at this point <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'd be upset too. But no, the, the clear winners were like Celestia and Luna's outfits, and them singing mm -hmm. a song, and then being cute as hell. I, I loved it. I, I just love that, like episodes. the fancy pants, like continuing on that. It's like he's basically telling them, like, you guys, you already know that Celestia doesn't do anything. Like, what makes you think she did this? <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Um, I, 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 best... This is the. Go ahead. The best part of the episode was the ending. Um, with them watching the... She was just glad it was oh, over. Oh, yeah. No. no. I like I how they it. ended it, actually. Yeah. That that it was, was one thing, ending. yeah. Because the way... Like, there there wasn't the resolution of, all right, let's go help Twilight. Or, or okay, they were going to help Twilight, but there wasn't the resolution of them helping Twilight. Like, they left it at, and Twilight's having... Her breakdown. Her breakdown. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I I well, I love that that bit where she's like, "Oh, Celestia doesn't do it all by herself. Of course she doesn't. I've got to delegate." I was just like, "How do YouTube 101?" <laughs> this <laughs> is how you rule Equestria. Yeah, I do. Gotta. I just want to say it again. That like Rainbow Dash. Okay, I do appreciate when she's brash and she just speaks her mind. Yeah, but it really she's does good for just. That. It will just solidifies again. She should be the element of honesty. Like I do right. time and time again. I'm like this. This is, needs to be switched. So I want to. <laughs> I want to get Saber and Race back on their whole argument about Rainbow Dash because I was watching My Little Pony before the started. What? It's like I watched My Little Pony. <laughs> it was the testing, testing one, two, three, and I was like, wow, Rainbow Dash is just the worst because it's like. <laughs> All my friends are trying to help me so I don't fail this test. And all I can think about is screw you guys. I don't need to study. I'm too cool for that. <laughs> what episode or what season was that in? Oh, um, four? Six, five? Four. Something one of those. I think it was four. Four. four, five, or six. Those was all blended well, together. Because there was. I... Let us all remember, bronies, that there was like an episode. Wow. Where, what did you sorry. call me? <laughs> you heard. You heard me. You uh, what? There, there was like a whole season where the show was like, okay, what we're gonna do is literally shit on these characters and make them all look like pieces of shit. shit. Like, like, like that was like the whole season. And then once Applejack's turn came around to be a piece of shit, she was like, I didn't learn anything. Fuck y'all. So <laughs> That was like season two. That was season two, though. Yeah. With the Flim Flam Brothers the first time? Yeah, the cider. Yeah, that was really early on. That was like the first time that Applejack wrote to Princess Celestia. No, I thought... I didn't I learn know. anything at all. Yeah, because it was like, I don't season know two, about Season two wasn't work. when they were crapping on everybody. No, no, it's not. You're thinking, of, you're thinking of six, probably. Season five, no, season six is just not good. <laughs> See, I'm I'm right, and everyone's wrong. So okay. let's continue. <laughs> well, no, you, really, yeah. you really are. This current Rainbow episode. Dash. <laughs> Rainbow Dash really is your favorite. Now you're seeing what I like. I just <laughs> like. I just yeah. I I I will stand behind my girl. All right, Sarah. I will always love Rainbow Dash. Uh -huh. And you're pretty cool too. Thanks. You're welcome. But yeah. No, I um back to it though, as far as as far as the sister dynamic in here. Now I did see in the chat Cadet Redshirt said that what was portrayed here with Luna and Celestia is one hundred percent how her and her sister are. So okay. All right. I'll I'll get it. I think the only reason that I was kind of Stepping back. Well, of course, there's sisters out there that. Fuck. Well, I, what what I was gonna say was I, the only reason I brought that up as like, oh, okay, is that I felt like the last Luna and Celestia episode that we had, mm -hmm. uh, where you know they were arguing about their their roles, and granted that was day to day stuff, not going on vacation stuff, but mm -hmm. I just felt like, okay, saw this. Now that's not me saying that I didn't enjoy the episode. And enjoy a lot of the stuff happening in the episode. I was just like, my God, sisters always fight. Dang it. <laughs> but granted, maybe they do. Maybe they should. No. Yeah. Me and my sister don't fight. We did as kids, <laughs> but we don't anymore. That's what you say now. 
Oh, okay. That's why you moved to California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how bad of a fight you guys had. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone, any last thoughts on this episode, though? I love the faces. Oh my gosh, when Celestia and Lena were singing their song and they were in the, like the, they were like riding on that. I forget. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Kind of part yeah. Celestia like bent her head back and made that face. I was like, oh, he's a pretty move. I'm going to be honest, guys. What I'm seeing this season is like kind of bumming me out that I'm like, ah, oh, this is the last season because I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, there's so many things that I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like, like animation wise alone. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see them really utilize that for the last 13 episodes of My Little Pony. Yeah, <laughs> they started stepping up the faces from like season seven on. Yeah. I mean, pleasingly, they've always been stepping it up from season to season, it seems. Well, the animation, maybe not the story, but you know. Well, yeah. Damn! Whoa! Not every like, story can be perfect. Season, season, it's not good, bro. But okay. <laughs> What? <laughs> I didn't like season six at all. Oh, sorry. I think maybe there's one. Maybe there was one episode. One. It was I the think... one with Princess Ember. And that's it. No, that's. I thought that was five. I, no, that's maybe, six. That's six. Maybe it's episode five maybe, of season. Maybe we aren't as brony as I thought because none of us can figure Dude, out what there season. Two hundred diddly dang episodes <laughs> of this show. <laughs> diddly dang. I, 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 I love when we're at. Conventions. I mean, I could and, tell you what episodes are in season so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I love when, when, when we're at conventions and we'll have somebody there come up and be like, so uh, season three, episode 11, what did you think about Rainbow Dash and that one? <laughs> it's like, you gotta help me out. <laughs> and then, they, then they're like, oh, I'm sorry. That was blank. And they'll tell me the title. And I'm still looking at them like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what if it's season happened. one or two, I got you. Like you can say whatever. Yeah. I still mix ones up, like yeah. Lesson Zero and Party of One. I sometimes somehow confuse. <laughs> yeah. People are crazy. One's one where Twilight goes insane. The other one's where Pinky goes insane. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Hirasashi, oh. are you trying to tell me that tell you me don't, don't like, like a heartwarming tale or the Saddle Row review? Do you want me to like say the episode? Season no, and, I, and I, number I, because the, that's the what we were just talking one, about. The first one, the Saddle Road Review, I do like that one. Was that yeah, in season, season six? six, baby? Oh, okay, I didn't like the heartwarming tale though. Oh my god, so you yeah. don't like <laughs> when Starlight Glimmer was Scrooge? Yeah, no, uh, oh yeah, I think that we all didn't like it because it came out in May and we're like, May, what is May, May, out? right? I was it was what did it in. Otherwise, I wasn't I like even a as an semblance episode. in the mood. <laughs> Thanks, M.A. Larson. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I forgot about Saddle Review. Yeah, that's I a good did. one. Yes. There we go. Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah. we're going to skedaddle into raffle time. Whoa. Yeah. Raffle time. Raffle time. So the way we've set this up is we do have people uh, entered in so we see the oh my god i haven't entered yet i i think i think you're set aren't you (laughs) i don't know know, man but uh yeah so so what we're uh gonna be doing is sarah's right now uh, can they see this oh wait take out the spoilers Uh, i know i'm I'm not i'm not uh, having them okay all right all right oh wow look at that you're all set up yeah. High budget one. This is the same one that we used last time. All right, same one we used last time. So so the names are in there. Um and yeah, so so yeah. the way this is gonna work is obviously like we said, we have two passes for BronyCon, four day badges. We will have the codes. I have the codes uh and we will email them. Email you those codes. Uh you will enter those codes exactly as they are written the way we send you them. Um, it'll have it'll say AC Race Best and then the code you want to enter the whole thing. So, oh man, are, are you all nervous? No, I'm so nah. scared. Laura's We're gonna scared. Laura's I'm gonna be able to make it. Nervous sided would be the best way to describe it. I'm I'm seeing, of course, names I recognize in here. Mm-hmm. All um, right, are we ready to spin? All right. So yeah, all right, all right. I need everybody to do a drum roll. 
the chat right now. Let's see the drum roll in the chat. Is there a drum emoji? I don't know, but I, I, I want to see if people could do drum roll in the chat. I know they can do it. I All believe. right, are we spinning? They're going to do the drum roll. I know, I know they're... Oh, uh, we there need we to go. see Drums. one drum... Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Uh, what do we do? It has to be like an emoji, right? Uh... James Justice! Whoa! Oh, good. Dude, James is a uh, cool guy. I like him a lot. Well, Wait, guess pa- what? Pa- what? Well, I was going to say uh, real fast. Paleo, how's Lammy doing? He's good. Can you give him a pet for me later? Yeah, I'll do that. Not now, <laughs> though, but later. Yeah, definitely not Not right now. Now is not. He would know it was <laughs> inauthentic. I'm, I'm cracking up at the spin thing because it clearly, like, does the colors so there aren't any colors next to each other but then at the top there's yeah. two that are the same color <laughs> dun, dun, dun. so what's the point of that um all right well congratulations james we will uh sarah yep. will be sending an email yeah okay cool after the podcast so so again and thank you for for tuning in and and again being a, a viewer here at uh, the semi-perfect podcast and again everybody thank you so much all right let's see who gets the next one sarah spin it spin it oh my god <laughs> see now who's, 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 who's it gonna be that, the <laughs> yeah oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. p-x-y that's pixie Pixie. Is Pixie in the chat. Go in the brony con. I saw Pixie earlier. Dun, 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 dun. I know I've seen James. Dun, so I know that's good. Oh, yeah. James definitely James. chimed off in the chat. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, Cadet says Pixie getting that win again. Does that uh, mean did Pixie win last year? Last year. <laughs> <laughs> There's Pixie. Pixie, congratulations. <laughs> I know. I see Brett Fields going, gosh dang it. Because it, both times it went right past her name. I was like, no. Damn. Oh. <laughs> well, congrats to the Yeah, winners. congrats. And thank you to all of our entrants. And thank you to, of course, as we always say, all of our supporters here on the Semi Perfect Podcast. You all are so amazing. And, and thank you so much for being there for us. Otherwise, yeah, we'd lovely. be just talking to ourselves. And that would be just. Un- unbearable talking to them. And now it is question time. Oh, all right. So Q and A. So we're gonna get into. I the... have a question. Just in yeah. general, what? it's not from anybody. Does anybody find it weird when in cartoons they draw the nipple? I I prefer my I prefer my cartoon characters to not have the nipple. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, this is when, this when, when they're what. Shot. This is coming from one of the biggest. When, when cartoon characters are shirtless, I prefer not to see their nipples. That is I thought it too. Race. I thought it too. I did. Let me tell yeah. you. So it depends. Yeah. It depends it, it on depend. the show and the cartoon. Because like, if it's anime, it's not as unsettling. But if it's like an American cartoon, I'm just not okay with it. Hero, you. you yeah. Know why I'm mm-hmm. with yeah. You. Okay. Uh, Palo, you're gonna have to explain this to me. Because you know how in, in, in some like cartoons when a character is shirtless, yeah, they either draw the nipples or they don't draw the nipples. Yeah. Can you give us an example but, of the but, nipple but, but, variety? Well, okay, it's here's here's why I'm confused. Is that <laughs> you happen to be one of the biggest connoisseurs. The biggest I'm talking about with <laughs> of, of I'm talking boobs. about with male <laughs> with with male characters. Oh, see, that's different. Okay, we're talking <laughs> about male. That characters. is different. Not... Okay, I didn't know you meant. Yeah, we we're I... talking about the shirtless female yeah, characters I, I, that are on TV. In what in what uh, in what cartoon <laughs> that is specifically made for kids? Probably. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> What cartoon uh, that's made for kids has boy nipples? No, I mean, because this, Race was thinking I was talking about boobs. I, I do have a too. When did, we, <laughs> when did we specify that it was kids' cartoons? What the fuck are we even talking about? about? I, 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 we're talking about nipples. The, the initial question was... We're going to Q&A. I'm sorry. If it's, <laughs> if it's a, sh- a shirtless male, I should have said. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I get why Paleo didn't specify it because if it's on TV, it's probably going to be a male who has okay. his nipples showing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would very, like, I would be very Island confused. <laughs> oh, no. And the anime also exists. There is that one scene in Zootopia. Um, so, Q&A. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, the, see the chat knew I was talking about males? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. So wait, my God. question is, are we going to talk about Toy Story or are we going to wait? We're, we're probably going to... So Sarah made a Toy Story thing. Yeah. I'm just Honestly, that's why I asked because I wanted to know what the spoiler screen was. But it's okay, I can wait. I can, oh yeah, I, no. I can give y'all a peek. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see. So don't worry, we're not going to be discussing. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so excited. Indeed, <laughs> <laughs> we're not actually discussing. Tw- Spent like a lot of time today putting together like three spoiler screens. I want to see all of them. Okay. Show me, show me Godzilla as you spoke. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> okay. There's oh wait, the Saber's here. Is he? What's up? He? Oh, hey. I just realized, but, but I. Porky since we are getting into the Q&A. Boy. Oh, man. I couldn't find a good gif of Godzilla that wasn't blown to fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so next I do time. I appreciate the ocean, though. It's, it's we, so we won't, foreboding. We won't have uh, episodes to discuss on the next show. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what we'll what we'll do is uh, here's some previews for the next show that we'll do, yeah. um, some movies that we'll talk about. Uh, so make sure you all go see Toy Story four, so we can <laughs> talk about the two. Good lord! I'm sorry, you capture the, the moment where the smile one. just disappears. <laughs> is that like is that supposed to be the audience? Like what is? Uh, sure, I guess. I just I I found that GIF and I was like, oh my god, I really need to look at GIFs of this moment where like he just makes these series of faces where he's so uncomfortable (laughs) you ain't never had a friend like me (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh where where were we Uh, oh okay questions okay let me see let me see here let me see what we got here this is about no that's june 12th that is june 12th so go ahead and send in and like we mentioned um uh, if you'd like to have your question prioritized, uh, go ahead and send it through Super, Super Chat. Chat. Uh, otherwise, we will be focusing for now on Twitter. Can I also uh, bring up a pony thing that we haven't talked about? Yeah. The um, the Dazzling's music video that was Oh, yeah. Recently. Oh, so I have to admit something. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Wait, I have you all talked it, about the... Um... The upcoming thing where it's in the style of the movie? Yeah, so there's a... We, we mentioned road, it. Road trip special? Yeah, there's a Yeah, special. that's coming out this weekend. Oh, shit. Cool. I, I, mail I didn't know it was going to be in the style of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like how now we're all excited about it. We're before the movie. I like the animation. I was more worried about the shadowing than the uh, animation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that was a... On the rendering yeah. part, but um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I hmm. so like I said, I still need to see it, but I I can't imagine there's like spoilers necessarily. No, no, no. So so I say <laughs> go, go for it. Let's let's talk about how was it. I liked it a lot. That's why I wanted to bring it up. But we don't have to like talk talk about it because it was just like you know they existed in Rainbow Rocks and then mm-hmm. didn't exist. For years, and then it's just like, bam! Here's a music video. That's yeah. the dance lines. What? Yeah. No, they were in. A, they were in some flashback in the pony episode. Remember? That's oh true. yeah, that's true. <laughs> they were the sirens. Though. Like the the season seven like finale. Mm-hmm. See, I'm a broner. A broner. <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited to see what they what they do with them uh, in the future because they're yes, probably gonna bring them back. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Um, I, I I intend on seeing it. I just haven't. Like yesterday, it's like Sarah's three like, minutes. I think you can spare. It's only like two oh minutes. yeah, yeah. I I meant to. I just it's one of those things where if it's not right in front of me, I'm gonna forget to do it. So I forgot to do it. <laughs> I'll check it out though, for sure. What's funny is during this discussion, I probably could have checked it out. Yeah. But there you go. Um, here we are. But, so yeah, I'll that make sure. The first one up there is juicy. We'll get to it. Okay, fine. We'll get to it. 
Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Well, I'll 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 hit this one. Um, since it it's obviously a big topic in uh, entertainment and just social media in general. Ozzy, I was asking passing of Etika. So Etika was a, mm. I believe, YouTuber slash Twitch streamer who uh, recently actually, uh, I don't know if it's confirmed that it was suicide, but yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, it's so really implied. Yes. Yeah, and and essentially, it 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 really is bringing up the discussion of of you know entertainers and stress and of course mental health, which is always a topic that I feel. You know, it's something that we should always be reminded of how yep. important mental health is. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, or unfortunately, uh, led to uh, Etika making that ultimate decision. But yeah, I don't know if anyone here has any uh, anything to say on this topic, but I figured I'd bring it up in case anyone did. I'd watched his videos before, a few of them, like, not specifically to go watch him, but just mm -hmm. like, hey, I like Persona. I want to look up Persona videos, and it's popped up. And something mm -hmm. like that has happened many times, so I knew he existed, and knew yeah. his, like, demeanor. So it was just, yeah, I, I opened up Twitter, and then, or I guess in Discord, and then I got that information. I was like, whoa, that was a lot of information I wasn't even slightly ready for today. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 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 I actually felt yeah. really sad. I, um, I, uh, I, I, I know of Etika, and but I follow a lot of people who looked up to him, and seeing his struggle devolve, where each episode got worse and worse, and I as an observer on the outside, was like, man, I hope he's not doing this for attention. Not claiming that he was at all, but I was like, I, I, it was just very confusing. But when they, when he disappeared, I think that's when folks were like, oh, this could be terrible because he couldn't possibly kill himself. Because I saw people talking about that. That's what happened. Mm, I, yeah. I felt sick to my stomach. I was like, oh my God, he did it. Like, that's terrible. Like, I... Don't even watch his content. I just felt sick thinking over how many people loved and looked up to him. It's never the answer, and it's so mm -hmm. sad. I, 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 I don't know. It's just so sad that he had those demons were chasing him, and he took his life. Yeah, he was around our age. He was like twenty nine. Yeah, I'm older than him, man. We both are. It's it's terribly sad. He's a, he's a, he's like, you know, still a young person with lots of life left, and also a huge, you know, following of people who looked up up to him it just goes to show you that like no one's invincible like no one look at robin williams i mean he took his life mm -hmm. and he's like a legendary guy i mean no one's invincible from this stuff so it, it's just good to talk and be proactive about it so yeah especially especially those that are in the limelight or thrive off certain energy when that's where you derive your joy of life from that's a very dangerous place to put yourself in yeah, uh, I can only imagine he also had a lot of people who were, I don't know how many times he read comments, but I'm sure there were tons of people who were just being evil to him, so hopefully that didn't influence him. Well, at this point, I guess it doesn't matter, but whatever, I don't know. I, I hope that there aren't bad people uh, I, that would tell him that, because that's, that's evil. That's straight up evil. Yeah, I, I really feel like, again, when, when stuff like this happens, it of course brings up conversation, um, which hopefully leads to these kind of situations being prevented or at least more prevented. Um, and it, with, with, with something like this conversation, you know, if, if, if you are somebody who feels alone in a situation more often than not, you're not, and there are people that want to help. And, and, and I oh know my, it's yes. not, and I, yeah, and I, I understand not personally, but but through these situations that no matter how many times, you know, sometimes when someone's in the situation, hears that they they still, you know, it, it might not get through. But it, it again, it's just it's one of those things to, you know, always try to just look out for each other and 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 kind of, you know, keep keep the conversation going about the importance of mental health. Um. You know, I, I feel like one thing because I've seen a lot of this discussed, and I and it's one thing that I actually don't feel like a lot of people are mentioning 
um, is that sometimes there is a you know a point where where a, as an individual we need to be able to tell ourselves you know maybe it's time to take a step back um, mm -hmm. because I've seen a lot of conversation come up from this from people who do uh, whether it's YouTube or, or streaming or whatnot on the entertainment side talking about the stress that it puts them through talking about in a lot of cases how bad of an environment it is and. And I feel like sometimes it's worth kind of pointing out, look, in the event that this environment is this toxic or it's not working out or it's this, it doesn't mean that there aren't options in the future. Maybe this isn't the profession, you know, for some people that it, it, I just I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people don't want to kind of focus on. It's, it's usually like I, I understand, you know, saying, look, you know, people behind a screen can be nasty and we've seen it. We've, we've probably all been through it where there's people that, you know, can bring down your self-esteem can put you in a darker place. Um, and, and, and the reality of it is that for, for some of us, it's harder to cope with that stuff than others. And there are other options, other venues of making a living in some cases. I'm not saying that it makes anything that, that someone be negative is doing is okay, but also, I feel like it's important to realize that you're not, no matter how old no matter. you are, what stage of life you're in, you're not stuck with what your situation is. You can always do something else. You can always change your environment. You can always change what's going on for you. And and I, I know it's harder for some than others, but it's something that I don't think is discussed a lot. But when I see this kind of situation, and I see you know even a lot of close friends mentioning how hard this kind of stuff is this is the kind of thing that i would say is is this where you want to be is this what you want to do are there other options maybe you know talk about everything not just you know what's what's holding someone back so i just that was one thing i wanted to to kind of just say i don't know if anyone has anything to go oh, with or against that but absolutely ultimately no matter what obstacles are in your way at the end of the day, you are the one in control of what you do with them, how you mm -hmm. handle them. And sure enough, sometimes it gets piled on heavier than others. Sometimes you are down a hole. At the same time, I was about to say what, what goes down must come up, but yeah, that's the inverse of physics. That, uh, But no matter how far down you go, there is a path back. And it's a hard path to walk. And you know, sometimes people choose different options, which is unfortunate to see. But there, are, for everyone that's fought a challenge, for everyone that's dealt with that in their life, as you said, Race, there are a lot of other people that have had similar experiences that will share that sentiment with you. For everyone that's going through a thing, chances are good there's someone else on earth that's gone through the same, just like you. And being willing to talk about it, being open to talking about it, it's a difficult point to get to, especially since, you know, these days there's a sentiment of being very judgmental or, you know, what will people think of me if, to admit that we're not perfect. Uh, but the ability to do that, while difficult, I think is probably something we could all do more of, just in general. Yep. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I knew that was probably a topic that would pop up. So I thought it was Q and A. I figured, let's go. So on uh, on that note, sad story, but uh, like we said, hopefully, hopefully there can be positives from this for others in the future. And um, yeah. So again, if you're ever in that kind of situation, down. If you're I, never feel like there's shame in in telling somebody that you know how you feel there's mm -hmm. not we're all Can human tell you beings all about my uh, uh, uh by the way i'm not trying to interrupt but like i want to tell my bird story later oh i i uh how about this i'll 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 dip into a question to kind of bring bring the bring the mood into another direction and then i want to hear your story okay sure 
All right. So um, this is a question that I don't know if anyone's going to have an answer to, but Waddles was asking uh, thoughts on the first trailer for Infinity Train. Does anyone know about this? I do. Mm-hmm. I watched the pilot. Is it is it spoilery? I, I did you're, not you're watch. Making no, a face. I just haven't seen the trailer. Um, I've, I watched the pilot for it and stuff. But oh. I haven't watched the trailer. How? Like so, oh, Laura, you watched the pilot too? Yeah, I'm in the same place as Sarah. Oh, so how was it? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the trailer yet. I I think it'll be a fun cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have no idea what it even is. Well, I'll show you. Then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's a train that's infinite. Infinity train. Really? That's it. <laughs> Basically, like it, there is it, there's this girl that is trying to like I guess escape from the train, so she has to go through like each car and like figure out like there's like a different like world or something in these cars. So it's like an extreme cartoon version of uh, an escape room, but each episode's a new escape room. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so it's a cartoon. Cool. All right. Worth checking out, it sounds like. Um, okay. So with that, Saber, I want to hear your nature. It's a short one. So uh, I'm at a family reunion um, in Minnesota right now. And there's so many pretty lakes here, and there's all kinds of beautiful animals. Sarah, you'd love it. I know you're mm-hmm. a nature person. You would you really like it. The lakes are super clear. And uh, there are a bunch of bald eagles who uh, nest on the lake. And um, I also, uh, when I was kayaking out there, they have these uh, two baby loons. And... Um, they're adorable, and they're also terrifying. I, I can't mm-hmm. trust, like, waterfowl. I feel like they're going to fuck my shit up if I'm not careful. <laughs> Actually, my dad and I went out with our family on a pontoon today, and he jumped in the water from across the lake, and this loon, I kid you not, came out of the water, because they swim underwater, and it started to like, to, like, almost attack my dad. Like, you could hear it go, you know, the little sound they make in the distance, mm-hmm. and it was, like, up on its hind legs, flapping in the water, <laughs> And I'm like, Dad, you're swimming towards a goddamn loon. You're going to get a, your neck bitten or something. <laughs> and he's got his earbuds in for swimming. And I'm like, I can't even see it. My Uncle Mike jumped in the water to give him backup. And, were, <laughs> and the loon was just swimming around, like, yelling at him. Like, we were laughing. Like, it's like a Jaws movie. We'll see, like, their torses being pushed through the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, going back to the other story. So this is so cool. I actually saw nature in action today. Um, we were walking back out to the pontoon, and on the dock, I heard the loons freaking out. Like, I just hear them squawking like crazy across the lake, and I and then I heard the eagles squawking like crazy, and I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? And I saw this eagle dive down towards the baby chicks I saw yesterday, and the one of the balloon parents jumped in the air and like almost collided with the eagle in midair. It was like a dog fight, and you just hear these birds are screaming at each other and i'm like oh my god it's a uh, 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 nature nature it's happening <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the the eagle flew away um but i i think eagles prefer to scavenge if they can but yeah it was it was wild uh the day before there was a bass that was dead in the water and the eagles kept swooping in to grab it but it was too heavy so they just gave up um but no these these are straight up like these eagles are out to get food and those Two chicks. I mean, they could be on the menu. According to the the guys who run the place, they said that there was there were like a ton of chicks earlier this year, and there's only like two left. And it's like, oh geez. Did you hit on any? Tasty. Wait, what? <laughs> Did you hit on any? Huh. P- any Pilio. chicks? They're chicks. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't that with a laugh. <clears throat> but. Uh, <laughs> But I did make out with them, though. Um, <laughs> the, the mother loon was stabbing me in the ear with her needle beak. But uh, no, Boy, really you're into neat. some interesting stuff. Yeah, right. Um, uh, foul play, I suppose. <laughs> um, no, it was cool, though, seeing all the animals. I love this place. I love it up here. And there's black bears. My brother-in-law saw a black bear uh, yesterday. So it's, it's like legit wild. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Um, I, I like the part of it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Nature's happening. <laughs> uh, we, we just got a super chat. So we have about four questions um, left that we'll hammer through here uh, to finish off the podcast. First one from Missy just sent in another super chat. So thank you again. Thank you. 
uh, saying, have you guys seen the MLP manga? It's Hasbro licensed. It has a ton of fan references in it. It's called MLP the manga. Am I saying that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manga. Sure. A Day in the Life of Equestria Volume 1, story by David Lumsden. Do you guys know about that? I did not know there was a manga. I didn't know there was a manga at all. Uh, well, I guess. Well, now I gotta to read check it. Check it out. Holy cow. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I don't read the manga, I just watch the anime. <laughs> and thank you again oh, this, for this, your this looks like some really cute art i just looked Wait, it up already finding stuff can you link in the general chat yeah we want to see it or either the topic show yeah. us die <laughs> oh yeah. wow oh look at Aww, that cute. super cute um all right. All right. So this next question is right. actually for Laura. And it's Who's from, that? It's from Nora. That rhymes. Nora, Nora says, Nora. my question is for Laura, my favorite person in the Sim podcast. Take that, <laughs> Gabe. Suck it, Gabe. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, Nora Suck asks, it. what would happen if one day you woke up and made? <clears throat> well, sorry, say that again? What would happen if one day you woke up and you were a mermaid. What oh my god, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> really? So I have like this really awful fear of the ocean. Oh, oh wow. Or like yeah, you just be in a natural so body of water. So even if it's like, oh no, you can be a freshwater mermaid. It's like, no, that's still a nightmare. What about a swimming <laughs> pool mermaid? What about what? A swimming pool mermaid. But then like I can't really go anywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh well what would probably oh, happen is you. that i would call let's I, I'm, I want to say i would like call 911 first but more realistically i'd call like one of my parents first and be like so this is what's happening are you sure you'd be that calm about it no can mermaids breathe air yes yeah. well ariel, ariel could right yeah i mean yeah. I'd, I'd have to see which had her way with her no, she could. But I mean, before. even before, oh, yeah, she, no, she was, was like, she would go above yeah. water and do like, stuff. Like, she hung out, day. like, on the side of yeah. Eric's boat for like 30 minutes watching him dance. Being, yeah. Being all I mean, we never saw what she was <laughs> doing with the. <laughs> huh? Nothing. <laughs> Mom? What? <laughs> no. I made a joke. Um, huh. But yeah, I would be yeah, that, scared and concerned. <laughs> That would be inconvenient because because you would be waking up in the situation, You'd still be like in bed, like you'd have to yeah. get to water. Yeah. That would be very difficult. Well, I, guess I'm going alone. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that you you would call your parents first. Like I'm, I'm trying to think. I would probably call nine one one. I don't know. Like, Actually, I want to pre- say I would call nine one one, but like more realistically, I'd probably be like so mom or dad should i go to the hospital and they'd be like yes why are you calling me you should go to the hospital and be like but are you sure though <laughs> that's that's true though you're right because like then you have to think like wait if i go to the hospital are they gonna experiment on me exactly i agree mm-hmm. See, also, that's like, can you of, imagine those that. medical bills like no thank you plus I think plus that's like up a lot actually <laughs> from a guy's perspective you also have to worry like you know are they gonna draw nipples on me <laughs> <laughs> uh... we've come full circle <laughs> <laughs> oh they'd be two circles all right <laughs> um let's see here uh so that leaves us with what where did I miss it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So our last couple questions. Uh, Pixie is asking, I had a disagreement with a friend recently and wanted to know what your thoughts were. Should, oh, here we go. Should live action live style action. remakes be considered animation or not? I don't consider consider full CG movies animated, but maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? Full yeah. CG movies are animated. Yeah, yeah. So full CG animated movies are so, so Lion King, yes. the one coming out. Animated. Yeah. As much as the director or whatever is. wants to think that he's doing a live action and he keeps, you know, like, I guess there was, he's like, John, an article where he's like, 
Yeah, I think there was an article like written about him, like where he's like insisting that is live action. No, like he doesn't I mean, want not. to call it animated. Nothing so in weird. that movie could exist without animation. Therefore, <laughs> I mean, I can understand why he doesn't want to call it animated, just because of all the in inevitable connections it's going to draw. I guess it's already drawing connections. <laughs> at, at the same time, yeah, if it's all. CG. It is an animated movie. Yep. That's like uh, yeah. like was was Jungle Book an animated? It had animation. It's, yeah, it, it's well, like ninety nine percent animation. Like like Lion King. Other than Mowgli. Full. Full. Yeah. But but like like I just I just don't know. Like I agree, uh, but then then struggle with agreeing because I'm like, yeah, it's animated, but I also don't know how I'd feel mm. if. Well, let's take it to a broader spectrum here, Sarah, well, and I'll ask you. Well, wait. What so, is, so what? here's my point: is how would you guys feel if Lion King won Best Animated Movie this year? Uh, that's man. that's that's where I'm struggling that's, with that's... calling it animated. I could, I would be mad, but I can't call it incorrect. It's animated. It literally is. Like, it Should was, there be was a who category? Fr is Who Framed Roger Rabbit yeah. animated? Yeah. That's an animated movie. It's, uh, but it's a hybrid. the whole thing is, is that we're talking full Well, that's CG. the point. Well, that's the point. Where, do, where does hybrid be end? And, you know... You it, have it, to it, at least have one live action. Jungle Book was the kid. So that would be a live action movie. A, yeah, it, there's live action in it. <laughs> so we, so we even... So mo motion capture, even though it uses a human to get the movements, is still animated. I feel yeah. See, because there, there's well, still like Polar tweets. Express. <laughs> yeah, the, but that was an animated movie. When Shit. It, <laughs> most most animations that use motion capture do tweak animations yeah. post production, where it, it make they make it a little Unless more. This is one of those bad movies that Saber reviews. Yeah. <laughs> they do not tweak at all. <laughs> Sorry, I, I sometimes they don't even animate. Just, <laughs> I just stopped listening just for a quick second. But is is anyone disagreeing that? If like Lion King is animated and like I don't know, Five Hundred Days of Summer is live action. Anything that has both animation and live action is a hybrid. Full stop. Is that is there any disagreement? I, in I so I, I guess the only place where I draw a, a line is if there is a movie that this is this is complete different cat kind of category from the topic. But I would say if there is a movie that utilizes live action. In the sense of like at the beginning, like Balto, for example, is an animated movie, even though they have the action bits at the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that, oh. that to me is. Yeah, that's okay. a bit different because like the live that's action right. is like so minimal in that it's not like. So, so, right. I, so, yeah. Yeah. so that's why I wanted to say that before saying yes, I agree, because I, I wanted to, I to make sure that I get that category of movie and then do. I, yeah, I feel like case, I take that on a scale on a movie by movie basis. Like I that feel like definitely a movie that that I would consider a hybrid would be something like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where it's very obvious that like we've got yeah live where, action. Whereas like with also, yeah in the interaction. Yeah. Where like with the, the Lego movie and Lego movie two where it, it goes between live action and animation. There's it's still not, an animated it's not, movie. It's animated. Yes, yeah. it's, yeah. animated. It's, an animated. it's not really a hybrid because it's like the the live action is so minimal compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. but, but then that brings me back to Jungle and Book. Pixie in the chat actually asks, "Is James Cameron's Avatar animated?" I say no, no, <laughs> no, because there, it's it's live action interacting with animated. Yep. But that's where that's nah. so. What what this brings me back to is going back to my Oscar question. I not saying they need to make a new category every time something different happens, but mm -hmm. like I would almost feel like at some point there's going to be such a difference between what we consider an animated movie mm -hmm. and a hyper realistic animated movie. Yeah, well, still animation. You disagree? I don't know. It's still animation, though. So, <gasps> so, so a movie like that's that's like I, the the whole context of this question is I don't. I'm back. Says I don't consider full CG movies animated. But, but what's the difference between? Well, but that wasn't the like, question. Should live action style remakes be considered animation? Or okay, not? but then the whole mm. thing, but that's what I'm getting hung up on is the ending of that like whole phrase is I don't consider full CG movies animated, and everybody's bringing up examples like oh is this animated? 
Mm-hmm. All yeah, of the it, examples we're saying, have live action. Well, like oh. Hero and saying about Lion King is is they would disagree. They uh-huh. they are saying full CG movie Lion King yeah. is an animated movie. Yeah. It's an animated yes. 100%. And I just I don't know where the line is drawn between uh like say Toy Story four and saying that's animated and then being like oh no but Lion King isn't because i don't know so like the, they're both full cg yeah I, like i said it just to me it's it feels i i'm not an animator but i imagine there's two completely different processes between creating a toy story movie and lion king i could be wrong yeah. but I, I i just something tells me that there's there's, there's such yeah, there's different, different processes but yeah. there's still animation <laughs> but there's still that's yeah. why i'm like sh- should there be a new for like with with it happening since Jungle Book did it, Lion King's doing it full blown, you know. Mm-hmm. At, at some point, because that was a debate, was should you know? Because I remember when Jungle Book mm-hmm. was out and they were getting toward towards Oscar season, people were discussing where should that land. And I was like, yeah. just just make a category for hybrid, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then we don't have to. Then we get yeah, but both. then. But I would say most how, how, how much live action needs to be in a movie CG. for it to be a hybrid. Again, I feel like you just handle it on a case by case basis. Because, like, because like, it's like it's Wally, very gray. Wally has live action in it. Right. So. I would call <laughs> Wally a hybrid. <laughs> Wally's a live action. So. <laughs> so. Is is because we're going down this trail of saying, oh, we'll we'll do that. It brings up another unrelated but related to animation topic of someone can easily say, okay, but then why wouldn't you also consider that for claymation, which is completely different, but it's still considered animated. Yeah. So, so, so that well, sense, well, yeah, that's stop motion is, is animation. Yeah. But it's it's live action pictures. I God. feel like <laughs> It's so, and the oh, drawings man. from an animated movie, like of a 2D animated movie, are also just pictures that somebody ma- made with a camera. Oh yeah, my of god! Those pictures. <laughs> it's a live image. <clears throat> so we all agree that. So that, it, this is a very what you, great. I, I wonder what Laura has to say. Laura, what, what, what are you going to say? I feel like there is a line to be drawn between intention where you're trying to make something as realistic as possible mm-hmm. versus you're trying to make something look stylized. Yeah. Um, because like with things like the Lion King, it's just trying to be like this flex of like, Oh, look how, how realistic these lions look and these other animals and like our water effects and whatever. But like things you can then go to toy story where like, you know, the people even not the toys, like the the actual people are not meant to look like, you know, a regular, like I can't distinguish Bonnie from a regular human child. It's like, no, you can tell a difference because one's stylized and one is, you know, what a regular person looks like. So I think there's definitely a line to be drawn between if something's supposed to look stylized versus something is supposed to look super real, like hyper realistic. But I don't know. Still animated mm-hmm. either way. It is. I, it is. Yeah. Like strictly I mean, speaking, yes. Yeah. If it's like Lion King is the Lion King remake will still be an animated movie. Yeah. But I think that like there is a, a maybe a different. <laughs> be a different title or like a different way of saying something that like i'm yeah. not sure what how to there's describe a, it there's an animated movie and an... a movie with animation in it uh, maybe for, that's for the example the avengers the hulk's animated but yeah not what an movie. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, well <laughs> i'm sorry did i lose you there race did you not no, know the hulk was no, animated it's was just, it's just, this was a juicy no. debate to end on because yeah. obviously we're way over time yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Avengers is not animation, though. So exactly, I saw that question in there. Where is was it Avengers animated? Yeah, I'm like, no. Yeah, Captain Marvel is far I mean, from animated. Thanos and Hulk are animated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? This sounds like it. And sometimes Iron Man and Spider Man are also com- animated. Sometimes yeah. it's complicated. We're, good we're question. Good. CG is a very good tool, you know, to help you know. Yeah, effects. enhance. <laughs> enhance. But yeah, wow. no, this this might be something that we want to talk about in the future because this is obviously a lot of people have stuff to say. 
Um, but uh, that being said, I'm I'm putting a close on the topic unless anyone wants to have a last word. On, oh, Ross on that. said I, he asked if it was a hybrid. Can we at least all agree that everything in video games is animated? Because it no, there be. will be no agreement, yeah. Paleo. <laughs> Except, except no. for it's like if, if if it's like a full motion video thing, which I, I, I say you could call an, uh, Avengers a hybrid, but I would still kind of qualify it as live action with CG enhancements. He's talking about video. Yeah, games. I know, I know. Oh, I'm just God. talking to Ross. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> video games are. An yes, I can't think of a single video game that I wouldn't consider animated. Oh, wait, <laughs> there was. Yeah, Night Trap. <laughs> only, uh, only full motion video video games. And Carmen San Diego. <laughs> there are yes, a couple of games out there that actually have live action. And also text yeah. adventures. Those aren't really. Oh, all right. right. I was going right. to say text right. adventures. Everyone, you yeah. just calm down. Yeah. Um, again, uh, folks, we're going to be back here in two weeks. I am working on pulling up my calendar. <laughs> Anime Guy says, is the Rescuers animated even though it had the naked woman? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the right question. Oh. <laughs> See, yeah, I appreciate it. That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> Sarah, we're going to be back here in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, that'll be the 10th of June. Um, and uh, again, we'll talk a lot about a whole bunch of movies yeah. during that. Uh, we'll also discuss the My Little Pony special that's going to be coming out. Um, I know a few people are asking when the next Jackbox party is going to be, and I'm trying to figure it out because weren't you weren't you thinking about maybe next time, like when we like maybe after we do some of our topics, or I don't know, we'll figure it out. But we want, yeah. I'm, I'm want. feeling like since there's a hiatus yeah. as of right now, that's like a good time yeah. to do another Jackbox. All party. right, so so we'll definitely uh, um. Again, for all the podcasters that, that joined tonight, thank you guys for all of you for coming out. Um, for July. Thanks for having July. us here, Grace. <laughs> July 10th. Yeah. July 10th will be the next show. Uh, for the Semi Perfect Podcast, that is a wrap on this one for all of our live viewers and, of course, of our viewers listening on, I was going to say oh. demand. Well, I'll, I'll say on, on demand. demand. Um, but yeah, thank you all for for tuning in congratulations to our winners and a, a big thank you once again goes to missy, missy. for being so Woo. generous and and just again we can't thank you enough thank you so much and we certainly don't hope to see you at a convention sometime down the road yeah Indeed. With all of you folks um but yeah that's yeah. gonna be a wrap here we'll see you in two weeks on the semi-perfect podcast thank you for watching good night everybody good, good night, night. Them ponies. Goodbye. Bye.